All right, we are live. <laughs> we are we are live right now. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Gava Club Podcast. Um, my name is Will. You guys already know who I am. I am the host of this show. You know, I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm very excited. We have a very special guest today. Very special guest. It took me a while to get her, but it took it was some kind of journey. But she's finally here, so I'm really excited. She's here. She's ready to share her story. She's one of our Polynesian sisters, all the way from Texas, all the way from Texas. She's actually low-key well-known in the Polynesian community, but she, but she, no, but, <laughs> but I'll let her, I'll let her introduce herself and let her share her story. And first of all, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity. I'm very grateful for you for taking the time to be on here. For everybody out, out here watching this for the very first time, um, thank you for tuning in. Thank you. And of course, if you show some love and support, support, please like and subscribe to my channel. And everybody out there that's been watching and been supporting my videos and showing me so much love and feedback, I uh, appreciate that. That means so much to me. You know, it keeps me going. It keeps me inspired to keep doing this. And so thank you for everybody that's watching and thank you for all the love and support. Mad respect to all of you. One love to all of you. But let's get back to this podcast. I'm very excited to have my special guest to hear her story and share it with you guys. Uh, but I'll let her introduce herself real quick. It's all you. <laughs> Thanks, Will. I'm very excited to be here. I feel blessed to be in 2021. My name is Lupe Vete. I currently am based in Dallas, Texas, and I am Tongan, and I'm excited to be here as well. <laughs> Not All right, we're here. <laughs> hey, I gotta hype you up. I gotta hype you up. <laughs> I'm, I'm fired up. I'm excited. And uh, Lupe, one more, like uh, one last time, I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm very grateful for taking the time to do this, and I'm excited to have you on this show. So let's get right to it. Uh, the very first question I'm going to ask you is how did you grow up? Yeah, so I was actually born in Texas. My mom's family, they migrated to the United States back in the late 70s, early 80s. And so she had me here to be surrounded by her family. So she was in Tonga, but she came and she gave birth to me here in Texas. And then I was raised in Tonga for the majority of my life. And then around my teen years we relocated back here to america and i've been here ever since so i'm tonguing with a little hint of bay arian <laughs> that's where I my feel it. hey is. bay area hey. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> all right so uh you know how, how was growing up for you uh your experience growing up uh you know only in your household the dynamic of your household and the culture and everything yeah so Growing up in Tonga, everything is pretty simple. Um, we're a really tight knit family, so we all stayed together growing up. We lived in Tonga until um, everything in Tonga is super simple. So the neighbors, everyone knows each other. We all mm -hmm. share food on Sundays. We go out and we give each other umu. Like if the neighbors are doing umu, they'll come bring us <laughs> over for food <laughs> and yeah. vice versa. And I think it was just a really chill life. And at that time, I grew up with. So I'm one of 11 siblings, but my closest sibling to me, he's a year older than I am. And so, yeah, we just grew up together, went to school there. And then due to some personal family circumstances, that's when we relocated to America. And my mom, yeah, yeah so I grew up with both parents for the first part of my life. And then for mm -hmm. the second half, my mom was a single mother and she, yeah, she did an amazing job trying to play both roles. Mm -hmm. And that's when, yeah, that's when we were here in America and she put us through school and did everything she could to the best of her ability mm -hmm. and the best she knew how. A lot of people don't realize that I was raised for a part of my life in a single parent household, yeah. but I think being raised by a strong Tongan mother and having her knowledge and seeing her hard work over the years has been an inspiration to me and has pushed me to become something more just because of watching her. So that's a bit about my life for the first half. And yeah, and I love my family. I, I think a big part of being Tongan is being very involved with your family and loving your family and being there for one another. So I'm grateful for them as well for being there for me throughout the years. Oh. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, moving to America, just touching on that, moving to America yeah. after being raised in Tonga, there was a little bit of a culture shock there. Because, yep. dude, imagine a little fob coming to Tonga and it's like yeah. this big place. Like, even though I was born here, I wasn't raised here. And then having to transition to that was a culture shock of some sort. But 
we're here and it's great. <laughs> <laughs> so since we're on that topic of culture shock, so, you know, um, you know, well, I guess can you, can you talk about your experiences, you know, because uh, I feel like, and this is something I, I had, I went through through too, and you know, I grew up in Dongan and moved out of the States, is like, you know, the, the challenge of, you know, I guess living, you know, adjusting and living a normal American life, but at the same time, we have to navigate that with our culture, which can sometimes the norm, you know, the, maybe the norms of American society, maybe not be, maybe something is not, it's not in line with our culture. And as mm -hmm. teenagers, as, 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 you know, we have to, we, as kids, we have to figure, figure that out because we go to the, the to school, it's a whole different culture and different, uh, different world that we go back home. Yeah. It's a different environment. So we like, we literally like turn the switch off and on and yeah. figuring out how to, and of course, uh, and figuring out how to navigate through that. So I'm, I'm, I'm just interested in your own personal experience, um, not only in the culture shock, uh, but you know, you, but you grew up as a, a culturally as, as a Tongan woman. But we're like, you know, and of course, women, there are different cultural things, expectations that's placed on you. So what was like the thing when you're trying to live a normal, you know, uh, you know, of course you're from the Bay, so you already know, we have to live that life, <laughs> live that life, <laughs> that Bay Area life. Um, yeah. You know, what was what was you know what was like the, the experience and the challenges and it's just trying to navigate both cultures and you know do you and live your own life yeah so i think stemming back from when i was raised in Tonga, i think i was lucky because my parents weren't as strict i know some families that had to go to church on sunday all yeah every sunday i remember back when i was growing up on sundays we would go to church sometimes i was raised mormon um yeah and but then a lot of times we'd like go to buy motu like on, the weekends, <laughs> like on Sundays, and I do get I would be lying if I was if I was stating like oh my gosh my parents were so strict and you know the Tongan culture really put me back and set me back and stuff, yeah. but that would be lying. Um, yeah. I was lucky enough to not have too strict of an upbringing, but touching on the culture shock thing, I think coming from Tonga and just being exposed to so many different ways of life and so many different ways of living was challenging. And I think as a kid, I think even now that I'm older, I, I'm still processing some of those situations in my mind as a young girl, remembering when I um, came to America and like seeing how everybody had way cooler clothes than I, <laughs> I came yeah. from Tha and um, yeah, so. I think although it, it is difficult sometimes to balance my Tongan identity and my identity as a woman living in a Western country, I think it's absolutely doable as long as you stay true to yourself. I think one value that I have learned and appreciated was staying close to God um, as a Tongan person, as a Tongan woman, is just relying on Heavenly Father when things go wrong. And also making mistakes, it's, it's going to happen, you know, like whether you like it or not, we're not gonna be the perfect Tongan daughter. A lot of um, times when we think of our Tongan identity, we think we have to be this certain, this certain way. And you know, knowing like our Tongan moms and our Tongan aunts and all the, the Tongan finematuas who will gossip <laughs> about you if you do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. I think having expectations from the community and the people at church and the people that you're surrounded by <clears throat> on top of having expectations to succeed in the Western world is kind of overwhelming, but it's absolutely doable. And I think as long as we block out the noise when it comes to things that we don't want to be, for example, if we're expected to be a certain way in the Tongan culture, but you know that as a person and as an individual, that's not what you want out of your life. I think you can just cut it out. Like culture is important. Culture is important, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Culture is definitely important. And I think being Tongan is a huge part of of who I am, but it's not everything, you know, it's not, it's probably a piece of me and it's a, an important piece of me, but there's also other parts of my identity that I want to live with and I want to nourish and I want to grow and nurture. So yeah, I guess you, you just have to pick and choose, prioritize what values are important, what's not, and good luck. <laughs> <laughs> No, that was absolutely no. You know, like no, it's funny that you're talking about that, and I just was running through my mind of my own personal experience when I when I moved from Tonga. So yeah. I I do want to touch on something that I think you said, and I feel like it's very prevalent, and I think it's one of the biggest things a lot of Polynesians and, and Tongans struggle with. Um, and you said it, uh, making mistakes. All right, um, I know 
in the Tongue and in Polynesian culture, you know, especially, and of course, if you add more, uh, being, being LDS to it, <laughs> add religion to it, that, that, that layer, right? So you add society, you add culture, you add parents, expectation, family expectation, and, and religion. I know a lot of times uh, in our culture that, um, that we have the expectation to be perfect um, all the time. And it's, I feel like it's probably more uh, focused and intense on women too. I feel like women, you guys, there's, there's more pressure for you to be perfect. Because the one thing I, I remember, I had a podcast, and and uh, and I asked that question, and she said, you know, um, the hardest thing, the hardest thing about being a Tongan woman is you get shamed for everything you do, <laughs> big or small. That's like, you can step outside the house and get shamed. <laughs> just walking down the yeah. street, you just, you just <laughs> with the wrong seat, seat with the wrong person, you know, you just automatically <laughs> judge, criticize, and shamed, right? Like right. the the Tongan gossip news goes viral quickly <laughs> <laughs> it's faster it's faster than social media that's so true it's faster uh, now yeah you're right media, one person can blast you and the whole world will know the whole world you did. You're, even your auntie from like tonga has no internet she'll find out something <laughs> <laughs> they will the Aki you, dude. They will the Aki like hang your bones. To the <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so, um, and, 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 that, and, and number one, the, the one thing I want to say about that is number one, no one's perfect. All right. Just straight up, right? No one's perfect. Your parents are not perfect. We're not perfect. The world is not perfect. So, we need to stop that ideology that we have to perfect because, uh, you know, it's our mistakes is where we grow the most. That's how we grow as human beings. So, uh, but I want to ask you is, you know, um, I know a lot of people suffered with that and I had my own friends and family and I've, I've that just suffered with these, trying to live up to everybody's expectations right. and fall, falling short. And then they, and they suffer mentally, falling into depression, mental health. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about experiences that for you, uh, if you don't mind, um, talk about something that you failed or maybe you did, you lived a life, you did something for yourself that was important to you for your happiness that you're, mom or your you know family disagreed with and then you just had to you know you just had to do you and knowing that everybody's probably judged or criticized you but you just felt like it was, this is just who you were so can you talk about mistakes right. that you made mistakes, yeah. mistakes in me so people can hear that 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 you made mistakes but you know that's part of life right i think my life now is currently you know for example, growing up Mormon, I ended up going on a mission and- um, Oh, are you a missionary? Yeah, I'm all oh, right. Okay, all right, you okay, know? okay. <laughs> so yeah, just touching on that is like growing up and nobody forced me to go on a mission. I wanted to go on a mission myself to see, you know, I felt like if this is an important part of who I am, I need to go out there and act on what I preach, right? Like, cause yeah. I really, I love Heavenly Father, and this is like my token of appreciation for everything that he's done for me. And Jesus Christ, you know, performed the atonement for me. The least I could do is go serve a mission. Yeah. And while I did that with the best of intentions, like to go on a mission, you know, and hoping that I will live this, this life of being the perfect Mormon person. Yeah, yeah. So, so start, I started my mission. I ended up serving in Tonga. I got called back to Tonga. And I absolutely loved my mission. The people there, the people in the villages, like in Vava'u and Hihifo, all these people I met and my companions were all amazing. And they had great testimonies and all of that. And, you know, you expect to come back home with, you know, being a good missionary and coming back home, you expect that you're just going to be like perfect. Like you're going to do everything right. But unfortunately, those expectations were set high for me as well, you know, by yeah. family members. Luckily, my family members aren't too judgmental. They're not, they're kind of like go with the flow people. So yeah. I don't think anyone has ever in my family has ever judged me, but I feel like, or maybe they have, but just low key. <laughs> but <laughs> um, speaking of those expectations, like going on a mission and then like coming back and now I, I drink and I do yeah. like worldly things and stuff like that. So I think those expectations were maybe fizzled a little bit or they were um, diminished because of how I live my life now. Cause my mom, she, she's always like lecturing me. She's like, okay, I'm going to have all this stuff. 
thing in my life I think yeah. she does have a point you know no yeah she makes the point of of drinking um <laughs> you I think of all the cringe moments that I've gone through in my life a lot of them was when I was drunk or intoxicated the yeah. moments where I'm not really my best self or who I'm proud of it was from drinking and yeah. doing things that I knew weren't right you know, but I fell into it because I was not blaming the alcohol, not to be yeah. like Jamie Foxx, but <laughs> the alcohol like, definitely played a role in my, in hindering my decision-making process. And so that is something that, but at the same time, I'm not gonna, you know, say that I'm, oh, I'm gonna go back to church and do all these things right. Because I feel like if my heart is not fully in it, then I shouldn't, you know, do that. And I shouldn't, try to live this life that I know I'm not going to be great at. If, if I go to church, then I'll just be lying. And yeah, I'd rather. Yeah. So I have decided this year that I will cut down on drinking, you know, it, it, it's a step, but like, <laughs> as you said, it, it def, I know it definitely has disappointed my mom that um, going on a mission and then returning with honor and then not going to church Whoa. and all that stuff. I know it's, I, it definitely that, I, 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 I could, I could, I know that the, that the punish could be the Aki. <laughs> yeah, they, they, I already know, but like, what can you do about it? You know? Yeah. Like, I def I know that being a return missionary, I know better and I should do better. But at the same time, look, it's my life as long as I'm making choices that I'm happy with and mm -hmm. I've accepted myself for who I am, forgiven myself for my mistakes and Heavenly Father still loves me. I think the world is going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so did you ever, um, I, know, I know you talked about your, uh, um, your mom. So like, uh, I'm just, I'm just uh, interested to hear that the moment, the, the, when, you, when you started to drink and then, um, and then you heard, and then you, uh, and then and then, some, and then you finally, the family members finally found out. All right, how was that? How was that experience? Because I'm sure you, when, you, when you first did it, it was like low key, it was on, right? <laughs> All right, and now you're right. So you're right. Dang, you know, I love this podcast. It's like exposing the parts of me that I never told anyone. <laughs> oh, I love it. But it's like, yeah, I remember. I remember. I would. I wouldn't even care about other people. It wasn't other yeah, people who I was worried yeah. about. Because trust me, I'm the last person who even cares about what other people think. But yeah. who I do care about is what my mom thinks. And anyone yeah. who knows, like my mom and I are super close, but she's the first person to like put me in my place when I'm doing when I'm doing things that she knows I shouldn't be. And I remember I just kind of I, I was just drinking, you know, all the time, like at special occasions and events. And mostly when I would be in Tonga, when I would go back there for a break or something. And eventually I just kind of like, I didn't sit her down and tell her, she kind of just saw it happening and heard it from other people saying like, yeah. oh, but I was at this place and she was drunk. Like. Yeah, yeah. And so that's kind of how she eventually kind of found out about it. And then she just, she never even asked me either. She just yeah. kind of, it just came about because I just started being more open about it and not pretending like I was sober when I was drunk. And yeah. it, th that's how it was. And I do feel that I did hide it from her for a little bit, but then when she eventually found out, I, I know she was upset. She was upset yeah. and disappointed, but at the same time, because she's such a loving mom, she, tried to accept it and even now she'll, she'll still lecture me but at the same time it's, it's a lecture with love and i don't feel like she's judging me she just yeah. wants the best for me and i'm sure one day we'll get there but <laughs> no it's all good it's all good yeah. um I, and the one thing i just want to add on to what you said like um you know uh you know when it comes to drinking for me like I don't see, um, for, for me, I mean, I know everybody has their own views, especially if you're Mormon, whatever. But right. for me, it's like, it's just if anybody out there, you know, uh, it's just, it's all about just everything we have in this world is a tool, right? So right. use. So it's all about how we use it. Um, it's like you said, so if you're drinking, you're like, I don't, for me personally, I'm, I'm Mormon too. All right. But uh, I know the, the Mormons are against, against drinking, but for me personally, like if it's, if, for me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big advocate for happiness. So like, yeah. If, if it makes you, you happy, drinker? are you a social drinker or like? 
I'm no, I'm a, I'm a just a in the moment drinker. So if, yeah. if, if, if so, I, I don't, I don't drink regularly. But if there is an event going on and I'm just feeling it, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, <laughs> then I yeah, but then, then I'll then I'll do it. Then I'll do it. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, for everybody out there, you know, if if, if uh, you know, just make sure that whatever you do in life, whatever is drinking, whatever you know, whatever you do, it's just as long as it's not hurting you and you're not hurting other people. And he adds, you know, making you making you happy. Then, uh, and the key is, I think, feel like the key, the key is moderation. Like, just learn dis- yeah. discipline. Don't let it, yeah. you know, don't and let it. Te- I mean, don't let it tear your whole, uh, tear your whole life and future and tear you apart. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's my perspective to it, and uh, I just wanted to throw it out there for everyone. Do you want to add on, add on to that? Yeah, and just what you were saying, I think it's super important to drink responsibly. Yeah. I haven't always been the most responsible drinker, and I don't want to come on here and be self-righteous, you know, and say that I know everything and all that. Um, yeah. But I definitely think it is important to drink responsibly and also take accountability for your actions when you make mistakes. Yeah. Cause I've made some terrible mistakes while <laughs> drunk. Yeah. But- yeah, I'm glad you. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, like you said, for everybody out there is listening, you know, and I know, and, if, and also just put out there, there's a lot of Mormons that drink. <laughs> of, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, so like you know, for me, like people try to hide the fact they drink. Like, people know that the moment there's a lot of Mormons that drink and pretend when they come to church. So, and also something you said. I mean, let me ask you: When you started drinking, did you, did you just did you ever like stop going to church because you felt guilty because you were drinking? Did you ever feel that? unfortunately no I that's the problem like my feelings like I should have felt guilty but I feel like the reason why I felt I guess I felt unworthy to go to church is the yeah. right word yeah yeah so um although I guess yeah I, I feel like I just felt unworthy and like didn't really want to go to church because I wasn't keeping the covenants that I had yeah. made yeah and so yeah so I think that was part of why I stopped going to church in the beginning. Yeah. And I just, it was like, I just kept missing church, missing church, missing church, yeah. and then just going less active. Yeah. And, and the reason why, and the reason why I asked you that question and, uh, and uh, I haven't and just put out there, I'm on the same boat as you. I haven't, I'm kind of deactivated right now. Yeah. <laughs> so we're in this together. <laughs> everybody that's watching for my word, I, I'll I'll be there eventually. He's eventually. coming. He's coming. He's working on <laughs> yeah, I haven't given up. I haven't given up for now. It's just life, you know. Life. <laughs> just life. Um. So I love all you know, all my all my members at the ward. I much love to all you guys. I still love you guys. Um. Now, now the reason why I bring that up because um as you mentioned earlier in the, in the podcast, like God is a big part of your life and i really believe that as well yeah. um god is you know my, my my rock my everything my foundation um but the one thing the reason why i asked you that question because i know a lot of not only mormons but you know really you know because we all grow in all tongues we all grow up in some type of religion whether you're mm-hmm. with Yana, right. Sastonga, you know uh, whatever religion uh, a church uh the denomination you are in um just because you you know just because you, you either you sin or you make a mistake does not mean you're not worthy for God's love. And that's something I had to learn and kind of like break that. Because the way I, I grew up, the way my, 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 my dad's a pastor. So like the way my dad taught me when he came to religion, <laughs> follow the commandments, you go to heaven. You don't follow it, you go to hell. <laughs> yeah, that's so, what I'm talking that, so teaching. So <laughs> whenever I used to drink, I was oh my God, I'm going to hell. I'm going <laughs> like, to hell I'm right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I always felt this, like like you said, this this um, um, unworthiness of going to church, and mm-hmm. and then I realized that when I stopped going to church, you know, when you, when you stop, you know, putting yourself in the presence of God, you know, sometimes it can, uh, you know, it ruin your life. And I've been there where I, I stopped going to church, where and then and I just stepped away from God a little bit, and then you know, my life ended up falling apart, you know, hitting rock bottom, until I came back to Him. So, and I just wanted to bring that up. You know, whether you're drinking, whatever you're doing in life, whether you're making mistakes, it doesn't matter. I just want people to know that no matter what you do, you're still worthy of God's love and you can still mm-hmm. go to church. Don't ever feel like that you're unworthy, that you, that, that uh, God uh, is, is disappointed or whatever. No, he always wants you to come back to him. And he under, also understands us because he created us. 
he knows your your caca. <laughs> you he knows what you're thinking, right? Like. Exactly. He knows what you're thinking. Exactly. Like you know, so he knows all your mistakes. He knows when you messed up. You know. Yeah. Um, but he doesn't want you to be down about it. Like don't exactly. beat yourself up. Yeah. About yeah. It. Exactly. Exactly. So and and I know sometimes the church, you know. Church can be very critical, and and you, and you don't want to go to church because everybody's like, you know, you get you can just tell in their faces that they're judging. Oh, see, them see, you know, them see, you know, you know, drinking and you're coming back. I will look how you look. I'm gonna have any more kalapu. All right, look, don't pay it. Like, don't pay attention to that. All right, right. At the end of the day, it's your relationship with God. I really believe that it's it's your it's your relationship with God. Uh, it's your salvation. Um, you have to go out and do, do what you have to do to. You know, get closer to him. So I just want to put out there for all the anybody watching this and feeling like that they're unworthy. Not God loves you. He still wants you. Appreciates you. Just just go back to him. You know, go in your time. You know, you don't have to do it overnight. You don't have to do whatever. Do it and in also, your time. I just also yeah. want to point out, like, you know, God is everywhere. You know, like for some of us, that's through going to church. Yeah. But I yeah. think that more than ever we should always remember that we have access to our heavenly father um wherever we are and so if you're feeling yep. down for me personally even though i don't go to church i am really close to heavenly father i feel like i can share with him he has brought me out of a lot of pain and a lot mm -hmm. of things that i have gone through in the past because of the knowledge that he's always there and i can always access him because he's my heavenly father like yeah we belong to him like we don't yeah so yeah, I think it's important no. to know that he's always there. And even if you don't decide to go back to church, well, that he's right there. Thank you, my love, return missionary. My love, 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 you know, if you could, if you could go to church, it's not. But like, you still have access to it. Like, you know, you can still pray at home. Uh, I know, I know, I haven't been at church. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't been at church in in a, in a long time. Uh, but that does not stop me from praying within myself. Like, I have conversation with him. I'll be driving, and you just start talking to him. That's how. That's how I pray. I don't know if anybody. Same, prays same. different. For me, yeah. I, I talk to him like he's on he's on my passenger seat. <laughs> like, so I just start talking to him, and that's my way of just keeping that communication with him. And just making sure that he's still in in my life, um, even though I'm not perfect, you know. Everybody out there, you know, people have that perception. I'm not perfect. I'm, I had I make mistakes too, all the time, um, but uh, but the reason why I am who I am today, and the reason why um, the things tend tend to always get better for my life, I know for a fact is because of him, and because I just try to, I try my best every single day just to get back to him, even though I do fall a couple times. So, uh, thank you for sharing that. I felt I, that was a really really good topic because I know. There's a lot of Polynesians out there that yeah. just, you know, they, they, they just feel that, that shit, you know, that, that burden of trying to live up to the, 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 the spiritual expectations, right. trying to be perfect. And that can kind of put a toll on a lot of people, especially mentally, emotionally in, right. in their lives. But just, I just, I just really yeah. wanted to share that. And thank you for sharing that. Yeah. You know, and I think it's important to point out, like, no matter what you're going through in life, no matter what mistakes you make or what bad decisions you make, it's never too late to rise above it. And of course, dwelling on your past is only going to hinder your progress to the future. So don't let anyone judge you for your past and let that stop you from accomplishing what you're meant to do. You know, if I stayed here and dwelled on what I did in last year in 2020 all the time, it's only going to what a party pooper it's not gonna take yeah. me anywhere like it's literally just gonna take me to a place of sadness and focusing on my mistakes and focusing on what i didn't do well and stuff so i think it's important to learn from those mistakes and make sure you don't commit the same mistakes ever again or try avoiding it at least but also be nice to yourself love yourself enough to know that you deserve forgiveness as well just as you forgive other people for doing you wrong you need that same type of forgiveness for yourself you know don't judge yourself too much and don't be so hard on yourself that you fall into this pattern of continuing to judge yourself and be hard on yourself and criticize yourself so much to the point of unhappiness yeah. so i think it's important to remember that we are human and yes like if the mistakes can be avoided let's do that but also let's not beat ourselves up and and allow what people think of us to be our reality we can't 
we can't stop what other people think of us, but we can stop it from becoming a reality and living up to those people's negative expectations. Yeah, um, exactly. And just, and just, I guess, just everybody out there, understand it's a, it's a, it's a work in progress at the end of the day, right? So like, you still have a whole life ahead of you. Uh, don't live in the moment. Um, but just like you say, if you make a mistake, just understand, learn from it, move on. You still got the whole, your whole life ahead of you. Um, I guess the next, uh, I guess the next question I wanted to ask you, um, I think you, you said it, and I think uh, this might, you know, cause some, uh, this may, may be uh, some hot topic right now, but so you said, you, uh, you said the culture is not everything. All right. So I kind of want to dive into that, <laughs> which I think is absolutely true. Uh, coming from me, I'm a proud, I'm, I'm a proud Tongan. You know, I love being Tongan. Mate matonga, baby! Mate matonga. <laughs> right, MMP all the way. <laughs> um, but I also understand that uh, that, co that our culture, as much as I value it, and as much as I love it, and as much as I, I'm proud of it, it is not perfect, contrary to be right. you know popular belief, right? Um, right. I, know, I know a lot of, and I realize that a lot of, you know, a lot of the, the things that we go through, um, there's a, no, 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 there's a lot of good and positive and healthy things about our culture, but there's a lot of toxic, unhealthy habits, mindsets, ways of thinking, beliefs that uh, our culture hinders us as, as children to grow in this world. Um, I know a lot of, and I, know, I know this topic can, it's going to be very hot for a lot of people watching this, because I know there's a lot of proud tongues out there just our culture is everything and it's, it's perfect and you know, yeah. um, but I do want to talk about that. And, uh, and can you uh, elaborate on that statement? Culture is not everything and how yeah. that impact, impacted you and what were your experience growing up and to be who you are today? Yeah, so I, yeah, I think that's an important and a valid point. Um, I think of our culture as something so beautiful and like I think of all the traditions that we've upheld for centuries and being one of the few cultures to honor um, our fahus and our sisters, loving our sisters. The brothers are always there doing things for the sisters. And I love that. I, there's so many things that I love about the Tongan culture. But like you said, there are also some toxic, some toxicity that comes out yeah. of it, you know? Yeah. And it, um, it changes the way that our life progresses and the mm. way our life moves. I've seen people getting hammered online for d doing things that are out of the norm or if they messed up a certain way, they are ridiculed and basically ta'aki online <laughs> because of not yeah. living up to the culture. So I do believe that it's important to honor it and to respect it and to be proud of who you are, where you came from and the traditions we've upheld. But at the same time, stepping back and choosing what's best for you as an individual and knowing, you know, mental health and stuff for our own mental health and our own sanity. I think it's also important to be selfish sometimes and and put ourselves before the cultural expectations. If it, if it means you're going to be depressed and anxious because you're following these cultural traditions, I say you drop it, you know, like you you limit it, you Everyone knows we're all like anyone who knows us, they know our cultural background. They know that Tongans are great. They know they're good at football. They know that they love their family. And those are all great things. But I think when it stops you from your personal and individual goals, that's when it's harmful. And that's when we are hindering our own progress because we are letting a cultural norm control our lives. And um, I was talking to one of my friends the other day who is um, Tongan as well, and we were discussing the same topic, you know, sometimes there are, are, are Tongan people who are gay or are Tongan people who want to do something that's out of the norm, but it's not accepted by our culture. Or there's Tongan people who want to date, who love people for the skin of their, um, not for the skin of their color, but for who they are as people. Like they want to date black people, but let's be honest in our culture, they some the older generation they think that that shouldn't be accepted and all that stuff and I think that's when it becomes toxic like you know I feel like it's important to accept ourselves and our traditions but at the same time not let it control us it's only a, 
a part of our identity, but so is being gay is part of our identity. So is loving another person from a different culture is part of our identity. And that's important to us as well. So I think it's important to balance it, but don't let it like overtake your entire world. Yep. And so, yeah. And I think for me personally, a lot of times we touched on this before being expected to just be this perfect person and, you know, doing things a certain way until you get married and all that. But that would be happening in a perfect world. But because we live in an imperfect one and we're imperfect people, again, we're bound to make decisions that don't align with the cultural values. And it's okay to accept ourselves for that. And yeah, just take, take what's good for you and what you can handle. For example, I wanna talk about like cavengas, for example, if you have like a huge family, you know what cavenga is, you mm -hmm. have to chip in money and all that stuff. That's great, I love the concept. It gives us a sense of community and a sense of responsibility to one another. But if that goal is stopping you from feeding your family or stopping you from buying that house you've always wanted to save up for or stopping you from paying for bills that you already have, then 100% drop the culture at that time like, and think about it at a different time when you're more suit suited to fulfill those responsibilities. Oh right. yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, so, you know, if you don't got it, it's okay to say no, y'all. <laughs> yeah, it's okay to say no. Like, you have, so, and sometimes you do have it, but you have other goals to accomplish. Yeah. You can absolutely put your, prioritize yourself first, you know, and do what's best for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember, uh, you know, I remember growing up, you know, that was the case, you know, you know, we had to, uh, uh, you know, to, you know, always take care. Everybody had to chip in. It's funny. I always remember growing up, and you know, when you get your first job and you get paid on payday. You know, for for normal for normal people, payday is a happy day. You know, they, yeah. they got paid. Yeah. Uh, for me, I, that was not well, a happy. You took day. it straight to your parents. <laughs> yeah, I know. Everyone's like, "Why are you saying it's payday?" I'm like, "Dude, yeah, don't even worry about it. <laughs> I'm not even gonna see my check." <laughs> <laughs> so, so no, that, that, that was a funny moment. But no, um, no, I want to ask you. Is, <laughs> Not the laughing it off, but you were <laughs> exactly. No, but it's funny. Like I remember, like for the majority of my life, my younger days, like you know, I would, um, you know, give as much as I can uh, to my family, um, and then I realized just growing up that. Uh, and of course, you know, I got into the sales industry and I started learning about money. I started learning about, learning about financial literacy. And then we will go, we'll talk about that a little bit more <laughs> later. And I realized, wait, you know, I just realized, like, I just saw, like, my, my family and how they handled money and the, the decisions they were making when it came to investing into their future. I realized, wait, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how much money I give them. It's a, it's a, it's poverty is a mindset, it's a cycle. Yeah. If they don't change their spending habit, they don't change how they accumulate debt. Then I can give them my paycheck or not. It's not my family is not going to change. Um, and also, you add on. I also add, add on to the fact that I wasn't happy because I didn't have enough. I wasn't able to financially support myself, my own well-being. Um, so I started to fall apart, and because I didn't, I wasn't able to do the things I wanted to do, and also like just feed myself and and take care of myself. I realized that I, at some point in time, like I had to have the courage to tell my family eventually say, "Sorry, I I can't. I have to say no now." Yeah, um, I, because like I got I, I got to take care of myself. Like and you know, you know that, that 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 quote: "You can't help other people if you don't help yourself first. Mm -hmm. I realized like I'm not help I, by helping them. I'm falling apart and I'm I'm falling into a dark place, and um and I really had to take care start taking care of my my mental health and put myself as a priority. And I remember the first time when I told my family that um that I I can't I told them no for the first time right. And I remember the first thing they said was like, oh, them see that offer, all right? Uh -huh. I, I, man, I don't like that hurt. You know, for me, I'm, I'm, I, a lot of things don't hurt me. You know, I'm really, I haven't really, I haven't really had a tough right. school because I grew up in Tonga with some tough parents. But that really hurt because I was like, man, like my whole life, you know, I, I tried to do everything I can. And I'm not, yeah. I, mean, I mean, I wasn't perfect, but I tried to give everything I can. And the one, um, the one moment when I wanted to do something for myself, um, you know, they, they would, they would, the only, the first thing you thought about was, was, was you and not kind of like, you know, 
show yeah. me some support after you know after I you know I was done. So that really hurt for me. I know a lot of you guys probably hear this and probably can relate. Uh, but for me, I just saw it as you know what. At the end of the day, I still love my family. Um, I love my family. I want to take care of them. I want to take them out the struggle. But I realized like I can't financially support my family and take them out the struggle of being a broken man. All right. So I want to be, you know, what's the, for me, I was like, what's the point of me of like being a son if I'm, a, if I'm a broken son? What's the point of me starting a family, having kids one day if I'm a broken father? Because I just can't say no to my family and let my cultural expectations, the toxicity just take over my life. I, I want to make sure that when I have kids one day, I have a family one day, I want to be able to continually support them in my place of happiness because I feel like the more happy I am, the more I can give. You know? Yeah. All right. The, you know, I love that. Said, and and I'm sure a lot of Tongan men out there can relate to you and your experiences, you know, and just feeling also, I think you rose another important concept was like thinking of the future and thinking yeah. of our children and thinking of our families and what kind of cycles we need to end and thinking of the next generation and how much better their lives will be if we take what we've learned from um, our past and use it to drive them to a better future is important and yeah like like I said finances is a topic where I truly believe there's a lot of financial illiteracy in our mm -hmm. in our community and it sets us back so much <clears throat> but and and, you know. and I want and, I'm, and, I'm, and I want to say something that uh, I that definitely believe that people need to hear um, because I grew up supporting my parents or what they needed for me um, I don't want that for my kids Right. I want and I want to make sure when I have kids one day, I don't want to burden them with my debt, with my financial responsibility that I should handle as a man myself. I want my kids to do what they want to do and live their life, go to college. And it, sometimes it's, it saddens me sometimes because our culture don't know about financial literacy. They put all their financial burden on their kids. I see kids sacrificing their future, like going to college, you know, going taking a scholarship. I saw I have, I have a good friend. He had a scholarship to go play football. Uh, he had to he had to deny it so because you know his family is not not making enough money so he had to start working get two jobs so he could support his family and give away with that scholarship and the education right so this i feel like that we have to stop this cycle and that, and that's the reason why I, I'm, I'm talking about this like i don't we have to stop this cycle where we have to for, like if, because if you if we if you can't say no then you have you end up like being broken and you you're broke then you start a family because you're both you're going to rely on your kids to handle their, to share their financial responsibility. And I understand, and I understand that, it, and I understand you have to do that as a family, but I've, I feel like the purpose of having, of, of a parent is to give your kids a better life than you went through. I don't, you know what I'm saying? So I, I like, for me, that's, that's why I'm really doing what I'm doing right now. And I'm focusing on myself and I want to be the best version of myself because I want to give my kids a future, a better, a better future. And I want them to live their dreams. Cause like, that's like, we, like we want to elevate the culture. We want to see more talent right. succeed, be doctors, be lawyers, be artists, be singers, you know, whatever, like whatever we want to do. But the reason why we don't see a lot of Polynesians or Tongans going into, into uh, you know, these type of occupations, the level of success is because they're, as soon as they graduate from high school, they have to get two jobs <laughs> and go support the family and just give up. Right. And there's, right. so, there's so much talent in the Tongan community. Exactly. <laughs> The amount of talent that I've seen in the Tongan community is immense. Like I always hear people telling me about their Tongan friends who know how to sing, they know how to play football, they know yeah. they're really smart. Yeah. And a lot of the Tongans I know personally, they're all really smart. And yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, yeah, but because they love they love their parents and they love the culture so much, it's almost to a point where they are not fulfilling or reaching their fullest potential because culture is setting us all back. And it happens to all of us. It's not exactly. even, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've all had moments where we have, yeah. we had lost the sacrifice. To, yeah. yeah. We had to forfeit a part of our identity to please the culture or something. So yeah, I totally, I get it, but, yeah. and, and, but we're, and, yeah. we're getting better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and that's, and, and that's the thing, like, yeah, I just want our culture to do better and, I just want everybody out there, like, you know, just understand, like, we have to stop. And I know parents don't want to hit this. We have to stop putting the, the burden on our, on our children. And I know that's not a popular thing to say because, you know, our family is everything. But I feel like if we want to have a better future, 
as a, not only as a people, as a culture, but for our kids, then we have to allow our kids to grow and we have to allow our kids to elevate themselves. But they can't elevate themselves if they're always burdened by, especially when it comes to finances, right? So um, I just want to talk about that. I just, I just want to throw that topic and uh, I know, please don't hate me, <laughs> but it's real. Uh, I just, I just, that's one of the saddest things, like you said, to see is when I see a talented Tongan, you know, when I see a very talented Polynesian, I'm, I'm like, oh my God, they have so much talent. But then they just, they, they, they're, 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 you know, they're uh, restricted by because they have to, you know, they have to give up, give that up so they can take care of their family. And I understand that. I'm not, I'm not saying don't take your family, but we just got to figure out a, a better solution than what we've known, so, what we've been doing so far. That's all I'm saying. Right. Um, also, like, Hitting on, yeah. hitting on finance, I just want to encourage everyone out there to get your finances in order. Like, check your credit scores, check, do all that, and, like, just sort it out now. Like, if you're watching this, I feel like it's super important to um, do that right now. And yeah, you better. <laughs> yeah. And also, and, and, also, and also, if you, I've seen this happen, and I'm going to speak to this, too. And I know this is going to be, you know, we're going to talk in Le Hanton. I want to let right now. Just, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna just be right direct. If you're if you have kids, right, and then you're you you and your kids are working to you know pitch into the family, but as a parent, you're not taking care of your finances and you're getting to debt. You do you spend you're wasting money. You know you gotta do better. You know, you got you gotta do better. And your kids have no idea what you're doing. I've seen that happen all the time, <laughs> where the kids are working hard but the parents are just. Not doing closing. Yeah, you're, you're just you know spending the the kalapu and faikava and wasting the money, and then the kids out here grinding and working for them. Oh my God, I've seen that so many times, you know. Um, so like, yeah, if if you if you're that parent, please like you got you gotta do better and have some sympathy to your kids. Like they're working, trying to give you their full paycheck, and you're not doing anything with it to better the situation. All right, uh, but nevertheless, I I regress. I digress. I digress. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> it's like it's like it progress. <laughs> but anyway, just had, to, just had to just my little malanga. My that was my little, you know, malanga session right there. Just speaking some facts is something I see all the time. So you know who you guys are. Do better, please. Um, yeah. So uh, so we're still in the in the topic of cultures, not everything. So. Uh, I know you talked about it, but you were more kind of vague, <laughs> general, general, was really, really general. So I want to ask you specifics, like what are things in our culture do you see, uh, but also that's really particular to you as a Tongan woman, uh, whether it's a tradition, whatever, you've mentioned one, Kavenga, that was one that's, that right. could be toxic. So uh, I don't know, that, but I know there's more. And um, I want to ask you, what are the things in our culture that in your, in your own personal experience, because you've gone through it or seen people going through it in your own family, um, that are either toxic, whether it's a tradition or if it's a, if it's a expectation that we put gender role that we put on, on on women and men, expectations. So, what are can you just you know talk about a little bit more? Because I feel like this is a really good topic to talk about, and we definitely need to de dive deep into this. So, any any more things that you see in your experience that that are toxic in, in our culture? I think when you're talking about gender roles, I thought of how many young women out there. I have witnessed online and even myself being slut shamed for yep. the things they wear or yeah. how they behave or whatever it is. You're automatically assumed that you are, if you're dressed a certain way or giving off promiscuous vibes, you're automatically slut shamed. Yeah. And I think it's important for young women out there who are Tongan to understand that what people say are definitely not who you are. And there's a, yeah, there's this, there's this double standard. Like, I feel like with the guys, they have it pretty nice in the song and culture, you know, you guys. Oh, yeah, I, 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 love it, I, so love, I love it. I love it. I love it. You guys can get away with so much, but I feel like for young women, when they end up getting married, you know, I see people online, the aking, just the woman, you know, from certain things and whatever it is they just assume that this woman was uh, they just tend to slut shame the woman more and and say like how are you making enough of mao and all this stuff <laughs> like, how about the guy like why isn't anyone talking about the guy if we're gonna talk about yeah. purity and that like how come you guys aren't shaming the guy but i do yeah. understand that it is important in Tongan culture to you know 
preserve your womanhood and all that good stuff till you're married. But at the same time, I do feel bad for Tongan young women for being shamed for just doing natural things in the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, I, I guess I've seen, uh, it's funny, I, I've seen that happen, you know, um, get, girls get slut shamed, you know, for anything they do. Um, and I also seen that, uh, you know, you know, those, you know, those, you know, those, you know they'll, they'll, they'll tell the boys, hey, oh, uh, they'll tell them, hey, oh, what, oh, tiny girl, stay away from her. You know, they'll tell like, they'll, tell, they'll spread that rumor, right? Hey, don't, yeah. that girl, she's not suitable for marriage. You know, right. uh, go, go to the, go to the, these girls, the, you know, those, the perfect girls, right? And I've seen the that. Perfect I've seen... Girls. The perfect girls who like <laughs> never rode horses. <laughs> that was that was a big thing I heard. Like when I grew up in Shanghai, I always like remembered girls not being allowed to ride horses or do anything that would, you know, which I understand it's important, but at the same time, there are just those are personal decisions that people make that shouldn't be aired online. Yeah. And, be bullied online for decisions they've made. Yeah, exactly. And, and also just cut, just, I, for me, I always like to challenge contrary to the popular belief. Most perfect girls, in my experience, are, 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 are perfect. <laughs> just put it, put it out there, don't, be, like, don't always believe what people say. So, you know, <laughs> so um, no, I wanna ask you, so, so since we're talking about slut shaming and it, it is a topic of sex, I want to, I kind of do want to talk about that because I feel like sex is something that is a topic that's really taboo uh, within our Tongan culture. Um, and I feel like because, you know, we don't talk about it, uh, we don't address it, we don't teach, educate, and you said it perfectly. It's, it's a natural, sex is a natural, um, naturally, natural thing that we do as, as a, you know, in our life. It's how we procreate. It's a, it's a beautiful thing, by the way. Um, so a lot of times because we make it taboo, we make it seem like it's, it's a bad thing, right? So, um, so in your experience, like, because I feel like because we don't know about sex and we don't get taught about sex, then we're more inclined to look for it at an early age. And then oftentimes- That was you know, just you, Will. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's- <laughs> No, yeah. and, I, and, I, and, I, and I see it. And, I, and, I, and because I, and I feel like because we don't teach them about sex, then- um, you know, that's one of the things like, you know, I see a lot of parents get disappointed when they see their daughter or their son have a kid early, like in you know, high, high school. You. And I'm like, and, and then, and then it, it, I have people I know they're really, really close. But the thing is, if you don't teach them about sex, then they don't know. I mean, honestly, when you, when you go into the real world and you don't know, you know, you don't know how to make good decisions for yourself for your future and, and you prepare for sex, then things happen. That's why how things happen. Right. But I feel like, and, and, it's, and sometimes you can and it definitely impacts somebody's life, especially a girl's future if she's trying to go to college and then she gets pregnant or a guy trying to get to college and yeah. something happens. But I'm just saying is like, I feel like that that's something that's important in our culture that we need to, t to teach. It's, it's, a, it's a normal thing that happens. So that way, when we're in those situations as, as, as Polynesians, like we can make you know, be better and uh, better decisions for ourselves. But because we don't yeah. know about it, then that's why, you know, kids are more rebellious and then and, and, and do what they do so and i'm not and i'm not saying that to judge anybody what they do with their life or you know whether you have a kid early or not it is what it is but i'm just saying is i'm just saying that in a way that it's okay to we need to teach our kids so they better prepare themselves because sex is important does does it does have implications to our mental health right right, right? Yes. because if Absolutely. you don't get if, if your partner is toxic and you have issues with the relationship that you don't prepare for sex then that can definitely put a toll on your health and your mental health. So I mean, we need to prepare ourselves so we can make better decisions to finding more healthy partners, somebody that's gonna, that loves yeah. you for who you are and don't wanna use your body and just wanna use you and, and, and throw right. you away, right? And see, and that's why I see, I see a lot of single moms have, uh, rising in our Polynesian community, all these women and men having kids and they're and they, and they left to, to deal with that baby alone. But mm -hmm. I'm just saying it's like, yeah. I just want, but yeah, can you talk about that? I, I, just, I just want to say, I just wanted to go into that topic. But yeah, to I think it's absolutely important what you're saying. I was just thinking when you were talking about that, I thought of my older sister. She, uh, she's she been teaching her, so her boys are probably like 12 and 13, uh, about to be teenagers. And 
um, it was interesting to me because she was telling me how she wanted to teach them about these things because they're important and how to be nice to girls because she felt like when she was growing up, like you said, sex is a very taboo topic. When you, even you asking me right now, I'm kind of like, oh my God, like, you know, that is taboo. And, but I definitely feel it's important to talk about it because I think of all these stories I've seen and heard on social media about different girls getting raped, for example. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a part of it is the miseducation that, our young boys have had growing up you know of course maybe they have when they grew up they felt like they felt things within their bodies but they just didn't want to act on it they suppressed all these things this idea of suppression and suppressing our real feelings and what we want to do it ends up becoming toxic and and we end up releasing it in ways that shouldn't have been released later in life so touching on what you said i think it's absolutely important to talk to young women and young men are it all starts at home. Yeah. It really does start at home. So if you guys out there have younger brothers or sisters that you feel like they don't really know about sex or haven't had sex education and stuff, I think it's important to talk to them about the consequences and the implications and what it means to, you know, share a sacred part of yourself with someone else. And I do think that in our culture, it's really cool that we save that sacred part of ourselves for marriage and all that stuff, yeah. you know? It's a beautiful thing. But yeah. At the same t- yeah. But at the same time, it's important to talk about it and educate our children about whether it's safe sex practices, yeah. STDs, you know, it's terrible that they have to go out in the real world and then find out for themselves yeah. what it is. And they, somebody ends up getting pregnant. And I think everything starts at home. And I think I'm just thinking of my future my future children, I think I'm going to be like my sister, how she's teaching her sons about it at an age when she knows puberty is hitting. And yeah, I think podcasts like this raise awareness on some of these issues that need to be addressed in our homes and what we need to be teaching our kids. But I I basically agree with you that educating um, Tongan kids about sex at the right age can prevent a lot of harm and a lot of things from stopping their future from progressing, like getting someone pregnant and all that stuff can really be prevented at home if you're teaching yeah. your kids about everything and, and just just telling them that they can share anything with you. You know, being that person who um, is always there for your children and not scaring them to not talking to you about things like that. So. Yeah, exactly. I, have hope for, I have hope for the future and I'm sure it's already started <laughs> out like this generation of Tongans I feel like they're more open and they can talk to their children about this because like you said it affects mental health it creates a num- numerous amount of problems you know over the long period of time when we are not talking about these things at home at the proper age so yeah I think you raise a good point well thank you <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, like, yeah, because I just, I just, it just sad. It's just because, like you said, um, you know, we just talked about financial literacy, how important that is for our future, right? Yeah. Who we pick as a life partner and children, procreation, that is also a big part of our future. Right. Can, can definitely put a ripple on what you're trying to do for your life. So, any, anybody that listens to this, you know this, if you, you know the difference between when you pick a, when you have a, 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 a bad toxic partner, you know how your life is <laughs> yeah. compared, to having a, compared to having a healthy partner, right? A healthy, a, a, a healthy partner that's supporting you, that loves you, that loves your children, supports your children. With it, yeah, it, it, there's a big difference in your life when you, you know, choose to have somebody in your life, not only to have kids with, but that also supports you. But, but like I said, like we don't, we don't teach our kids about sex uh, and not just, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing we share with, with somebody to be intimate with somebody and not somebody just- you love. Yeah. somebody you love and, cher- and cherishes Respect. you and, and respects and values and not just give it to the first dude <laughs> that, showed, that tells you you're pretty. <laughs> hey, <that him. laughs> Which I see a lot because we don't actually get our kids like that. And of course, to men. Did you do that to people? Will, come on. <laughs> I, no, I just saw that. You know, I just, that was something I just saw. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, and of course, we don't teach... Uh, we don't teach uh we don't teach men about 
safe sex or having sex, then we just didn't, we just take you, we just letting these men run around having babies and not taking responsibility for these kids, baby right. daddies and, and, and leaving out these moms for single moms. Like we need to teach our kids, hey, if I'm gonna have a son one day, I'm gonna let him know, hey, if, you, if you're gonna have, choose to have sex with somebody, make sure you're ready for that responsibility. Mm-hmm. All right. If you, you know, if you have sex, you have a kid, make sure you're that person that you're gonna spend. So that's something we need to have and have a conversation with. So that way men can take responsibility for the kids. And also like, so like we keep that fi- family dynamic together because I feel like lately I've seen there's a lot of single parents now um, and single families now. Um, it just I just see that it's starting to increase within our community. So I always wanna make sure we keep the family together. Um, so I know we talked about financial literacy, you know, we talked about- Wait, touching on what you were talking about. I- oh, go ahead. I remembered, oh, yeah. yeah, I remembered um, reading something and also talking to one of my friends who worked in Utah in the health department about STDs. And I was talking about how I was saying, I was saying, I was like, oh, in the Polynesian community, the rates are probably low because, you know, like they're pretty responsible in my mind. Cause I'm like, that's what I've grown up to believe in stuff. And she was like, actually, no, the high, like the highest, the highest rates of STDs and stuff are in the Polynesian community because because there's the lack of education about it Mm -hmm. and the lack of knowledge so they end up not realizing the signs and symptoms of it because they haven't been taught it at home or you know their healthcare providers just failed to teach them about that and again just like financial literacy I think sexual emotional literacy is also something that we should focus in on our on our homes focus on in our homes and teach our children and yeah just make sure that they know about everything that is out there in the world and then leave it to them to make their decisions but my mom always says you know I teach you everything about the world and then it's your choice to make whatever decisions it is you make but I'm already telling you about the good and the bad and so yeah, I just wanted to put that out there because I think a lot of times we are not educated enough about these really real life topics that will affect us, you know, as we're growing up. And it's important for anyone else who's watching to know these things. Yeah. 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 It's like perfect. Yeah. Like protect yourself. And, and I guess the, the best thing I could just say to anybody out there make good decisions. Um, I, and also, I guess I would, because you shared something you read, I think I want to share something that one of my friends shared with me. Like, I'm a really big uh, believer in energy, right? Mm-hmm. So when you have sex with somebody, you're sharing your energy with somebody else. And I'm a really big either, believer that if you share, you know, if you have sex with somebody that has very toxic energy, that comes into your life. And then I feel like that that's, you know, that, and if you keep doing that, if you don't choose healthy partners, then uh, you attract a lot of negative energy and into your life. So, you know, please just make sure you just choose some, you know, have, you know, make good decisions for your life partners and give it to somebody that's worth it, you know, honestly. Right. Um, uh, yeah, so um, we're going to, I know you're big, uh, very big on mindset. Uh, I know you're very big on that. And um, I know we talked about earlier in the podcast, you know, you said that, you know, you're, you're, you're a whole different person. <laughs> your, your mindset is totally different from, uh, from everybody, which I love about, uh, which I love about, uh, that about you, by the way. Um, Thanks. Uh, so can you talk about mindset and um, especially when it comes to cultural mindset, the things we teach our kids mentally and uh, beliefs, value systems that often hinders them from their growth. Um, and that doesn't, that does a disservice for them as far as like elevating their life. Cause I know, uh, I, I'll, I'll give you one example. One thing I grew up, I remember when I used to grow up, like, you know, uh, um, and I know I talked about in my last podcast uh, with uh, Eli Matangi, Matangi, watching this, shout out to you. Um, I was taught that to, to be grateful, humble, uh, to be grateful for, just grateful for what you have. And I remember growing up, you know, I told you my dad was a pastor. So he always told me that, hey, if I die, I'll be my you know, what the, you know, five day, just five day, five day, five day. And I grew up with that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's a big one. Oh, All right. So I used to grow up thinking just, just to, just, just, I would just, you know, be grateful for what I have, but that developed into, to, into a mindset where I was 
I was afraid to ask for for more or for something that I wanted. That if I wanted some, more, yeah, if I well, if I if I wanted more out of life, if I wanted more okay. out of the job, to ask for a salary or increase that I feel like I deserve, I will always struggle with that. I would never ask for more. I would just set whatever people gave me. I just appreciated that and just settled for that. I would and I would never ask for what I'm worth, uh, if I, if, and what I deserve, even though I know I deserve and I do believe I'm worth more. So I used to struggle with that, especially when it came to the workplace, where I felt like that I was, you know, promotion came up, and I felt like within myself that I was qualified for it, um, but I just was afraid to ask for it, and or, or go and you know challenge myself and put myself in those positions in those roles. Um, but it wasn't until I had mentors and you know they changed my mind, saying, yeah, you know, it's, it's okay to be grateful and. Mm -hmm. That's a very that's a very great uh, human value and uh, and quality to have as a character, but on your mindset, you got to go out there and attack and get what you get what you deserve in this world. If you want to go get right. it, right. so when that's when that shifted, when they, when he shifted that mentality, I wasn't you, afraid. To, right. I just went I went in attack mode and it just went hard. I went for everything I wanted to do for my life, and that's why I'm if I that then that's why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. Um, because I feel yeah. like I, I, I do, I, I believe in myself. I do believe I deserve great things in my life. I could, could go as far as my mind can achieve, but I have to pick that, that mentality that just to be grateful for what I have and settle. And, and that was just one example I just wanted to bring up there for you. So I wanted to ask you that same question. Uh, in your experience, in your life, what are the, the, the cultural mindsets that, that you went through, your experience that we kind of, kind of hinders us from our growth? Right, our yeah. I think just growing up and seeing my family on both sides being super hardworking and thinking of, I've noticed this more in America, a lot of people, they kind of make excuses. They, they you know, because society has this stand, you know, so we live in a racist society and we live in a society where things aren't really in our favor is how people always, you know, they, they always talk about how things, the system doesn't work for us and all that. You know what? If you're gonna just be stuck with that mindset and you think that things should be handed out to you, then you're gonna be stuck. But if yeah. you shift your mindset and you change your mindset to say, you know, hey, America, you know, it's not perfect. It's not a perfect nation, but there are so many opportunities here for me to grow. And there are so many opportunities here for me to make something out of myself and um, become whoever I want to be then you know your mindset has shifted and the results will be different. And I think a lot of times our enemies aren't really people, they're more feelings and um, fear. Like I feel like mm. fear is a lot of times it's our enemy and we try our best to make excuses because it justifies why we're lazy or why we're not going out there and making use of our opportunities. And sometimes I hear a lot of people saying like, you know, the culture, I, I get it. The culture, there are certain things that sets us back, you know, but at, to a certain extent, at some point, if you're not progressing because of your culture, at that point, you're just not loving yourself enough to break out of that, you know, or, or take responsibility for your take life. responsibility and just take accountability and become whoever you want to be. And I think, yeah, that's why mindset is so important because you the, like depending on how you ask yourself and how you how you live your life and shifting your mindset that will determine the outcome and the results of your life so if you it's easy to just sit here and make excuses of why I'm not gonna go to work or why I am not gonna finish something or say like oh man the culture you know it's that's the easy thing to do you know but the harder thing to do is say hey look this sucks, but I'm gonna change my mindset about it and I'm gonna make things happen, not just for myself, but for the future generation, for my children, you know, to live a better life. Like, yeah, so that's why I think mindset is important. So what is something that you had to unlearn from our culture as far as mindset wise, so you can propel yourself? Something I had to unlearn. I think just, that's a good question. I think just like caring so much about what people think. I think I remember at a point in my life, I, my younger days, you know, like by the time I hit my twenties, it's different, but I remember thinking 
like what would what would th this person think of me if I did this you know what would what would what would you know because growing up Hongan you're always like um you always hear people saying like or something you know yeah, yeah. so that's kind of like you try to that's when you're holding yourself back from becoming who you really want to be or expressing yourself the real way you want to be you know like people pleasing like if you're oh gotcha gotcha yep yeah people like people pleaser and also not just people pleasing, but also caring about what other people think, you know, which is a form of people pleasing because, you know, if you worry about what other people think, you're trying to please them. Like, and at the end of the day, it's like, when you think about it, you have to unlearn those things and not worry about what Mele and Saini are saying, or, you know, like whoever. Um, why, why, why you gotta do Mele like that? Damn, that's messed up. <laughs> Mele and Saint, what's wrong? Damn, put Mele and Saint on blast. My, Mele is actually my first name. Damn, so. for all the Mele and Saints out there, I apologize. One of <laughs> we my, just one, we just put you all in one cap. <laughs> one of my best friends, her name is Mele Saint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, yeah, but yeah, that's <laughs> no, just mess with you. <laughs> Continue, yeah, continue, so yeah. continue. Like, like what I said, yeah, just learning to not really care and worry about what other people think. And I think I live by myself. So I think that helps a lot is like just being in tuned with my own spirit and my own mind makes a huge difference. You know, sometimes you just have to go live by yourself so you don't hear any noise or anything. This is not specific, but to me or any, but to anyone out there, I think it's super important to, um, in progressing and developing to who you really want to become. I think it's important to have that time for yourself to just find out who you really are, you know, because that's super important. Sometimes when you're living with a lot of people, a lot of the times, or you're surrounded by the same stuff you end up being part of group thinking and at some point that can be detrimental to your self growth so yeah yeah so, so to go live by yourself at some point <laughs> so since we're in the topic of people pleasing i know you said that you know that's something you see um and experience so um what did you used to do to please people Back in the day. I mean, like, like, I said about, like how I was talking about my mission and stuff and like how yeah. uh, like the, the drinking and stuff and just yeah. not really living the life how I wanted to live, but more mm -hmm. like living the life of what people expected me to live or being somebody that other people. And I say other people because it's like when you really think about it, there's nobody there expecting you to, <laughs> you know to yeah. be a certain way or anything but it's all in your head like that's why i was mm -hmm. bringing it up in yeah. the mindset thing it's like literally all in your head i had to change the way i thought like they're gonna think this they're gonna think but you once i asked myself like wait who <laughs> like, yeah who are they and then you realize that they has just been a concept that you created in your mind over time based on what you knew about the what i knew about the culture yeah and I just started creating this mindset in my head. And instead of thinking that way, I just thought, what if I just lived authentically for myself and for yeah. who I am? Like, what does Lupe think about this? What does Lupe want, you know? So, so yeah. Sometimes that's another thing we think that other people will think this or other that, but that is honestly none of our business what other people think and what they will say because people will think what they want people will say what they want and what they think there's no way we can change their minds so what's there to lose when you're just being yourself yeah exactly yeah and, and for me like you know and i'm sure people probably seen this or heard this or uh sounds kind of cliche but um you know you, you can't be happy if you never if you can't be yourself that's just, that's right. just facts. Yeah. Like you can try to act, you can you know have the facade or try to, you know, be somebody or not or pretend, you know, please everybody. But if you're not happy with who you are, and if you're, you know, also if you're not comfortable being yourself, you're you never know, gonna be happy. You're never gonna be happy, and uh, you see it all the time. You know, people 
going into jobs, relationships, situations that they're not they're just pretending and please people, but they never do what they truly want to do for themselves. And um, and if you can't, like I said, I, I encourage everybody out there um, to do you, you know, be authentic. You know, the more authentic you are, the more happiness and peace and joy, fulfillment you're going to feel in your life. Um, and also, like, like, uh, like Lupe said, you know, opinions are just all mental. Uh, it has no value or impact. People's opinions of what they think about you has literally had no value to your life if you don't allow it uh, to come into your life. So uh, number one, the way I see it, people's opinions don't pay my bills. <laughs> you know, unless, you, unless your opinion and pays you're my bills. Gonna, and you're not going to please everyone. You know, at the yeah, end of the exactly. day, when you're staying true to who you are, not everyone's gonna be happy with that person. And that's fine. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, if you if I'm not for you, that's fine. Like do yeah. what's for you. And but I feel like the people who truly love you, because you know, we're all different. Our expectations yeah. from people are all different. You know, pe what people expect from you are gonna be different from what people expect from me. But like in our relationships and stuff, if if somebody is unhappy with who you are and and you feel that, you feel like you can never make them happy or be who they want you to be, then that means that person is not for you. Unfortunately, you know, that person- Cut them off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're lost. I mean, yeah. but, at the same time, <laughs> but at the same time, but at the same time, at the same time, they're game too, you know, because what if, that person, you were just not helping that person's life. You were just not adding anything. To, and I think that's also an important thing that I've come to realize is that we as people, we have toxic traits too, you know, that it may be toxic to one person and they don't like it, but to somebody else, they might love that trait and they might need that trait in their lives, you know? So what I'm saying is sometimes we have toxic traits too. And when people walk out of our lives, that's okay. They had every reason to, we were toxic to them. So I think it's great that we're just not, we take responsibility for that. And we're not self-righteous and just be like, Oh, you know, I don't even know why they walked out on me. Like yeah. playing the victim, oh, playing the victim is another pet peeve of mine. Like, yeah, don't play the victim. Like, just learn what you can from that and just be like, it is what it is. Yeah, and you, uh, and you, and you say, you know, I, thank you for saying that also. And because like I said, like, um, you're not gonna please everyone, right? You're not gonna please everyone. And, um, and also, you know, for me, just understanding like the human behavior and psychology of people, you know, people that hate, people that judge or criticize or purposely try to put you down are hurt people. You know, hurt people hurt other people, right? right. Uh, because most people are unhappy, you know, they find validation of putting other people down so they can feel better about their own miserable life. <laughs> that's just, <laughs> that's just, that's just facts, right? right? Because, because if you, because if you truly, think about this, if you're truly happy with your life, you don't have time to put other people down. Right. right? It's not, and that, it's, that goes against your, you know, your normal human character because you're happy. Like when you're in a happy place, you don't even don't want to even do anything or even entertain any negative energy. Uh -huh. So when you see people that are hating you or discourage, you know, they're criticizing you, you know, whatever. And I don't know people, you know, perception is reality, and, and a lot of people will judge you. Just I just understand it's coming from a hurtful place, and I had to learn that because for me, I like, you no, know, even though at this, at this point right now, I mean, I don't care what people think, but at the same time, I still care what people think. <laughs> because it's just my I'm, I'm a very I'm, I'm empathetic so I do care like, yeah you know if, if maybe if, am I doing something wrong you know I do want I, I, I do want to naturally help and and, 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 and and please people because that's just my nature but I had to learn as a mentality wise like I kind of block, block the energy out but um yeah, and, but also we've, go we've ahead, all yeah. and also I think it we've also hurt people too when we were yeah, hurt yeah, you know yeah, or like yeah. whatever the case was this is human nature like yeah. you're right like what you said about hurt people hurt people and although sometimes we're not intentionally hurting others sometimes we have to take accountability that we did hurt someone yeah like even though maybe we didn't see it but or I didn't see it or anything but the fact is sometimes we hurt people and 
It sucks, but you have to take accountability yeah. for it. And, and like, I, like I mentioned earlier, like, you know, when you're happy at place, you, you don't have, you know, you don't even entertain negativity. And, you know, and like I said, I've, I've, I've judged people, I've put people down, I've hurt people. And I realized just, you know, introspect, just, you know, reflecting back up to my former self. Whenever I, I whenever I criticize somebody, whenever back in the day, when or I try to intentionally hurt somebody because I was hurt myself. I was at not a good place. Yeah. So I realized like, wow, like I'm the reason, I, I mean, just for me, just like, you know, my own transformation from my own life and trying to fix myself. I realized that all the times I did those bad, those you know bad things to other people, I realized that I was hurting myself, and then uh, and I'm glad that I, had, I you know I I was able to learn from it and then start working on myself. And so at this point of my time, my life right now, like I I literally try, I I make the effort of never trying to judge somebody, um, but be but just be understanding when I meet somebody, because I know one thing I don't know everybody's going through something. Mm-hmm. Whatever somebody's mean to you, you don't know what they're going through. Right. <laughs> you know, you're you know, right. you know, they might have a bad day. They might go through some issues at home, whatever. So you just happen to meet them at that bad moment, just because somebody you meet, and then so a lot, a lot of times, all in our head that we all, all these people hate us. No, sometimes those people you just met them on a bad day. <laughs> yeah, they just had a bad day. Like they're just yeah, right. letting it out on us. <laughs> yeah. So, so just so many dynamics of, of, but at the end of the day, like you said, just be genuine, um, and uh, and don't worry what people think. At the end of the day. And you can't please everyone, you know. And, and then a day, like if they, if, if people like you, cool. If they don't, it's fine. It's and no, right. and, and, and don't take and, it and personal. And don't take yeah, exactly. They and just don't. Always, they just don't think you're for them, and that's okay. Yeah, and never ever feel like that you're not enough, because people don't accept you, and people don't you know don't value you or don't say good things about you. You know who you are at the end of the day, and God knows what you're doing and the type of person you are. Um, so just make sure to do you, right? So, you know, to do you and be yourself. Um, I do, I do want to, I guess it's a fun question I want to ask you. <laughs> ready? I'll be ready for this question. <laughs> so I'm ready. sure there's a lot, I'm sure there's a lot of criticism and hate that you've gone through in your life. And I'm sure there's a, there's this perception that people have of you. All right. Um, I'm interested to hear what do, what, you know, based on what you've heard, what do people think of Lupe? And <laughs> I'll, I'm, just, I'm just interested to hear. And, just and, random people? Uh, no, no, it's just because we all hear, everybody hears the criticism, you know? We all hear it. Okay. So, I'm just, right. so I'm just interested to hear what, what's, the, what's, the, what's like the narrative, uh, the negative narrative people have about you or they hear the criticism, the judgments that people think about you. That's totally opposite of who you are. What, because, what specifically are you talking about? Like, no, no, like, like I'm sure you've, you've heard criticism, but, Okay. People, right so just in judgment, general just in general right so i want can you just share what we heard so far of what people say about you that's totally opposite it's not even close to the, yeah. person, that, you know, to the person you are today so i'm just interested <laughs> to, to talk about that so what do people think so what do, so what do you hear what do people think about you and kind of share to people right now like that is not you and it's totally opposite because you know right a lot of people have said that i'm petty <laughs> um that's a common one that I'm yeah like, people are people are saying like petty like a lot yeah. of times i hear that some people when they send me messages from yeah. whether it's just random pa- fake pages or whatever i get that word a lot petty and mm-hmm. i feel like for me i mean maybe i do seem petty who knows you know what yeah. that's what, other people <laughs> not that yeah <laughs> no. Um, no that was just a natural, natural i know i'm just kidding <laughs> i'm just joking but yeah i think petty is one and although you know i i can see why people may think that but to me that is totally off from who i am as a person i think if people knew who I was, they would know that I stay to myself a lot. I'm Mm -hmm. kind of a hermit. Like I just, I'm always by myself most of the time. If I'm hanging out with anyone, it's just like my family. And, (laughs) and um, yeah, so yeah, petty, I hear a lot. What else? I know, I know there's more. I know, bring them out, bring them out. I know there's more. (laughs) (laughs) I think selfish. I've heard somebody say selfish um there are are so many like I had somebody message me and and asked me if I was an escort like if that's what I did for (laughs) a living (laughs) a few messages actually an escort 
yeah, which is just totally far from, and I know there's totally more, but that's the few that I've actually read. Like sometimes yeah. I just totally don't even read anything. Mm-hmm. But the few that have really stuck out to me were that, yeah, the petty, selfish, uh, and escort. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just totally not true. Like you said, yeah. which one would be farthest from the truth? Like, I'm not an escort. Yeah. <laughs> So good yeah. to hear. It's good to hear. Um, no, 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 no. I was, that, that was just some, just some fun right there. Because it was, it, for me, it's always interesting to see, like, you know, I see people and everybody, you know, I have, I, there's always, for me, I've, I've never, I'm never the type of, this is, I'm never that type of person when people say, hey, don't, don't talk to this person because they're, they're just, for right. me, I, I don't even care what if you tell me. I'll find right. out for myself. I'm that type yeah. of person that I'm not, I don't care what you tell me about this person, whether or not if it's a close family member. Um, I'll just I'll, I'll, I'll I want to get my own experience and my own perspective and my own judgment. So right. I've heard that I've, I've, sometimes I go to events, parties, or something, get together, and then. How about you? Said, what, do they, what do they say about you? That you uh, heard. What they say about me? Um, I think it's um, I'm too. I think a lot of people think like I'm too. Uh, like the same thing too. Self, like like you said, the selfish. Like I, because for me, like I'm right. I'm at this point in my life. I'm just doing me. Like, right. I, uh, I, I barely talk to my family because I'm just, I'm just, there's a lot of things I'm trying to do for my career right now, for my life. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, for me, when I'm focused, when I, when I dive into something, it's tunnel vision. Like, right. I, I literally just block out, and block out the world and everybody. And it's, and it's not, and it has nothing against everybody. It's just, that's what I need for me to be focused. Like, I'm, I, like, I'm very, like, habitual, disciplined person. So when I'm dedicated to something, I, like, I literally just put all my energy into it. And a lot of times that I kind of like, I then I know that I have to do better to reach out more to my family and talk to people a little more. But for me, it's just like when I'm when I want something, like I'm gonna just go into it and then put everything into it. And sometimes I kind of block out too much people, so people have the perception. Uh, for my family, I know I'm too selfish and don't care about anybody else. Don't care about what anybody else besides myself. See, that's just, your that's your family though, so it's not random. I'm talking about like random criticisms you've gotten. A random <laughs> criticism of gun. Oh, uh, hmm. Random. I don't. I don't know. I. I I'm not. I'm not, not, be, not be for real. Like, I've never heard any public criticism from friends about me. It's more or mostly just family. <laughs> Honestly. Sure. Um. Nah. You know. Yeah, I've you're never, perfect. I've never, you're perfect. I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> hey, don't we? Don't we? Don't we? No, yeah, no. I'm not. I've never. Uh, uh, no, honestly, like, like you said, I, I always, I literally keep to myself. Like, I, my whole life, like, I just kind of stay to my. Like, I always dive on myself into my career. You know, I, I do go out here, here and there, but mm-hmm. I barely, I, I barely go do anything. Like for me, it's just like you know, I felt like. When, as soon as I came from Tonga, like that was my whole like mission in life is to make things happen. Right. And, and you add on to the fact that I had to, you know, start working for my family, right? Take care of my family at a young age. Um, and then just constantly working to take care of my family. So like my life is pretty just like just narrow. You know, I didn't li- I didn't live the typical uh uh American life, you know, and just you know, go everywhere, you know, a lot, you know, go and take pictures in the mountains and, and <laughs> And stuff like that like I, you know for me it's just like ever since i got here we're just always like okay let's take up the family we need to go to work i gotta make things happen and that's pretty much my whole life honestly so um but yeah, yeah but anybody but i oh, but, oh, i mean but I, I have i have uh you know i have hurt people and and you know i'm not uh it made me sex on some people uh i did i did i guess that's the one is for me i guess i have a habit of is if i'm not feeling you like I just cut people, I cut you off, and I think I feel like sometimes you I cut people. Too, I I cut, cut people too early. <laughs> so I think sometimes. <laughs> you don't but give that them was, a chance. Yeah, but that was but so that was when I was very when I was like I remember I told you before I was in an unhappy place, and mm-hmm. um, so you know when I when I remember I told you like uh when I felt like I was overburdened by everything, and I wasn't taking care of myself, uh, I used to like just lash out or just cut people off. And uh, and uh, often sometimes I feel like that sometimes uh, back in the day I was cr- very critical towards other people because I wasn't happy with myself. So everybody out there that I uh, I ghosted like I cut and I'm sorry and, and criticized. I, 
I guess I'll take this time and, and ask for you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. I know a lot of people I haven't talked to in a while, um, but I was just going through a not a good time in my life. And uh, I know this, most, most people don't know because I always, I'm a lot, like you said, like I've always had this, I would never show it to anybody. That's the thing. Right. So like I could be suffering inside, but I will always act like I'm happy and energetic. And uh, I'm so happy now at this point right now, I'm not like who I'm on the inside is the same person on the outside. But back then it was just, I would just play this facade. And then when I felt too much, I just kind of push, push people away. So, but yeah, that was I a good feel question. Like, yeah, Go that's important that you say that because um, I was thinking of how, lately, I've been thinking of how I kind of want to go try out therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I've heard really good things about therapy and how there are certain things that happened to us in our childhood, certain trauma and stuff that maybe we didn't fully process, or we saw things that we thought were normal, but weren't actually normal. And going to therapy has helped a lot of people. And even if you think like, oh no, I don't need therapy and all that stuff. But I was looking into it and I think I might try it out. I'll get back to you and let you know how it goes. But I've heard good things about therapy, just unpacking trauma that you didn't even know you had. So maybe, yeah. 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 Oh, I I guess you just said something that kind of triggered something. One of my my friends told me, uh, he just said something perfect, right? So I guess that's one of them. I have heard one of my friends have told me that um, a lot of, you know, a lot of people think that I'm just like perfect dude or whatever. And then a lot of times, like, uh, I, I guess a few people feel, uh, don't, they don't want to approach me because I feel like they think that I might think less of them or something because I'm like, I'm just, you know, because how I live my life and how I, you know, how I am, mm-hmm. people have that. People have the perception of like, oh, I'm, I'm like, I'm too, I'm, a, I'm, a hot, I'm I guess I'm on a high level than everybody it's, to make it feel like they're not good oh, enough to approach high-headed. me. Oh, you're yeah, high-headed? Yeah, I, 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 I hit it, whatever. I, I think mean, I've whatever. heard that one before. I, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, like. yeah, so like they think, you know, I, I know what I'm doing for my life is, is opposite of the culture and, you know, all totally out the norm of what I'm trying to do. And, uh, and I know I'm really focused, I'm, you know, I'm a driven individual and a folk, you know, so like a lot of people, um, especially, you know, I've had my friends would tell me, yeah, a lot of people think like, oh, yeah, you're just this whole nother level. And then they, they feel like that I won't even give the time of time of day. Like they don't want to even approach it because they feel like I won't even give them the time of day to talk to them because like people feel like they're, I'm being, they're beneath me or something. Um, you need to not- change that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank no, you. That's not, <laughs> again, that's, not your, that's not who you are, you know? That's yeah. Not- it's yeah. not who you are. It's just what it's just people's perceptions of someone can be distorted based on yeah. what they've seen or what they've heard. Yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, I think it's totally it's normal for all of us to hear things about ourselves that's totally like false and not true. But then again, it's not even our responsibility to clear it up or pay attention to it. So yeah. I tell I, what that yeah, I, I tell people to look look. Um, you know, when, when I, you know, I, you know, I guess it's, we all have versions of ourselves. I, so I do have a professional version of myself, but when I'm, but not, but when I'm, but, 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 but the, when I'm home, I'm, I'm just a fob. <laughs> yeah. I'm an Islander, you know, I'm just a straight Islander. I'm a straight Islander. I, I dress, I still dress, dress like Islanders uh, when I'm in my comfortable clothes. Um, but like, yeah, that's just, you know, like that old saying, you take the man at the island, but you can't take the island at the man. So, yeah. So that's, I guess that's the, perception out there so yeah yeah that was that was actually a good topic we talked um i do want to talk about something i think you said uh about you know uh out of the norm uh doing things out of the norm uh, out of the norm i know in our society and that well in our society the culture sometimes when people do something out of the norm and uh we just you said it you know perception people have the perception they distort it and they have the judgment and criticism so right for me, one thing I always love is I love seeing Polynesians do well. When I see all Polynesians doing new, uh, trying new things, elevating themselves, succeeding, you know, going into industries that are not dominated by our ethnicity, that's totally, uh, you know, they're the first person to go into. Um, I'm, that, that excites me. I always like to see people, uh, our own culture, our own ethnicity, 
succeed in life. And because I feel like we need more of that. Like I would love uh, as a kid, you know, I would love to grow up uh, or well, my kids grow up one day to see like Tongan doctors, see a Tongan senator or see a Tongan, uh, you know, uh, lawyer what in just all these professions that we all business entrepreneurs business people social media influencers so they so that way they give them confidence of what they can what they want to do for their life but um so whenever i see somebody doing really well i always want to i always want to support them and you know, anything, anything i can do um but no a lot of times when people do that especially you know uh people like to criticize and and shut and shut them down or put them down especially in our culture uh, so i want to ask you is what a when it comes to the out of the norm, what are the things that you do that's considered out of the norm, uh, but I mean, in our culture, but for you, you feel like it's who you are and it's something that you want to do for your life to give that, that makes you happy. So if you want to talk about that. Yeah, I don't really want to touch on my long-term goals because I feel like goals are super sacred to me. Yeah. And like, yeah, there are things fine. that I would just manifest in my diary or in my journal. But mm -hmm. for example, I was thinking today of, for example, finance, like um, we already talked about it earlier, yeah, but that's yeah. like the fields that I feel like I'm super passionate about. And um, I see a lot of people um, who meet, who come in or like, for example, for work, they sometimes they're seeking people to manage their, like wealth management or wealth consult consultation and stuff to, regarding their assets and stuff. And I just, it makes me think and reflect and reflect on Tongans and how much better we could be about creating wealth for our future, for our future generation. So that way they don't have to, for example, the stuff that you talked about that you had to go through when you had to give away your first paycheck and stuff like that. I think if we think of like other cultures sometimes they have their kids when they're born they already have bank accounts opened for them or like saved for them for their like their trust or something like that and I think just getting into finance and that um I think it's really important for Tongans like that's out of the norm to really think about financial literacy that we've already talked about. But I think America is such a great country and there's so many opportunities like economic opportunities and economic freedom that we need to take advantage of. And um, but yeah, that's just kind of like what I think. And for anyone who's watching out there, if you're in high school and you're watching this, I would recommend you get your credit score checked and then um, once you see that, save up all your money, invest it in IRA accounts or whatever it may be, the investment of your choice. Do that right now because if you put that in your IRA account and you get like, for example, whatever the rate you get, percentage return, whatever it may be, when you're older, you can retire early and you don't have to worry about living paycheck to paycheck when you're older. And I think a lot of times we think of America under a negative light sometimes because of what we see in the media and what we, what all the media outlets are saying. But one thing I will say about America is economically, it's a great country and you can gain economic freedom so easily if you just take advantage of the system and make your money work for you um, in the long run. And, but yeah, that's kind of it. But I also have other goals, but they're like, I feel like my goals are like sacred because no. <laughs> I feel like on social media, I never, t I don't even want to talk about uh, career work stuff on social media. No, it's media. good. No, everybody's different. You know, yeah, so yeah. you want to work privately and work on your goals. That's, that's all power to you. You know, we just, we just, uh, just don't forget me when you make it big. You know what I'm saying? Hey. You know, <laughs> don't forget you, boy. <laughs> You're so not gonna make it big. <laughs> oh my God, it's so cool. Eh? <laughs> um, no. Uh, oh, I just, oh my God, I just had a great question that I wanted to ask you, and then it just literally just slipped out of my mind. Um, you lost your train of thought. I definitely lost my train of thought. Let me give me like 10 seconds, see if I can find it. It would just move on there. I just go, this, go on to the next topic, which is something you said. Oh, boom, 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 boom. Okay. We were talking about, you were talking about financial literacy. And uh, I'm, I'm interested to hear your opinion. 
because I feel like that's a question I've always asked myself, like, why don't, uh, why don't Polynesians take the initiative to learn about financial literacy and, you know, build wealth uh, and just live in that cycle. And I feel like there's so much cultural and psychological dynamics that goes behind it. Uh, one thing I do know is we're very religious, right? So uh, one thing I do know because we're so religious and I've heard this with a lot of Polynesians is like, they don't wolf, they don't care about money. Yeah. So this money is not, a, a priority in their life you know in the Polynesian hierarchy as far as priorities the only thing that they care about is is god family start a family have kids <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's 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 all that's the priority list if, if you do all check back all, all those three things you just mm-hmm. make sure you take care of god make sure you take care of your family you start a family have kids then you've completed your i guess your purpose in life and, uh, and that has become, I guess, the mentality or belief or the cycle. And, you know, because I've heard that, like, you know, people are like, why do I need money? I have God. You know, <laughs> <laughs> God will take care of me. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, all right. And I'm, not, and I'm not trying to, and I'm not trying to devalue the importance of God in, in our life. And I, and I just, we just had a whole session about God, talking about how much, he, how much a vital role is. But I do see that because, you know, people, it's, I guess it's just, it's not within our, our priority, and but 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 at the same time, I see the same people like struggling financially, and then they're running around asking for money, and and then then uh, you know, and then they you know they suffer. Um, but then I'm like, okay, yeah, uh, but then that's why I tell people, no, no, it's good to you know trust God, but God's not gonna fix your life for you. God's not gonna, not gonna it goes you know. With heart. God wants you to work. Yeah, well. exactly. Like you know, like you know that old. People call faith quote, and works. Yeah, faith and works, right? Yeah, you can have you can have faith, but if you don't put any work behind it, then your faith is irrelevant. So, um, so, so that's just like my opinion, you know. Uh, and I feel like that's a subject that we have, to, like you said, and it's all it's all a mentality thing. We have to break out of that mentality, right? And but, oh, but go ahead if you want to jump in. Go ahead. Sorry, I keep cutting you off, but um, touching on that, it's like it made me think of how you were saying. Uh, how for your children you want them to become like doctors and lawyers and all that and what why finance is so important to that and why like economic freedom like that's why it's good to study economics or finance and anything in mathematics because um like this isn't just for you like your life here what you build here you will have children who will inherit that and grandchildren and when there is we know that here in America, the more money you have, the more likely you will have access to like tutors and to better schools. And, you know, so I feel like that's why finance is super important because the wealth that we create here doesn't end with us. It will end with, it won't end because it'll go on to our future generations and our posterity and stuff. So it's important because what we invest in now will affect the next generation, like our, our children will have more access to healthcare, to education, or whatever the country has to offer. And on top of that, it will allow them to go further than we ever will, you know? So there's also this idea of access that you get when you take care of your finances and are responsible now. So yeah, I think, I think it's like, just like literacy, literacy, math, writing, there's also financial literacy that is so important and pivotal to our existence as Americans. And yes. yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah. So, but, uh, but what do you, but in, 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 your, in your own personal experience, like why do you, why do you feel like Polynesians don't take that initiative um, to try it? And, and I know that I just talked about, about, uh, about God. And also one thing when I throw it out there, um, when I, when I used to grow up, uh, I remember like uh, our relationship with money. I remember I was always taught that money is evil, you know? Yeah. Cause that money is a bad thing. You know, whenever people think of money, they always think about, you know, the, you know Uncle Scrooge, you know, the evil, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just hoarding all the money. So we we have this, we have, we have this perception that that making money, is, yeah, making money is, is, a, is like, is associated with greed and evil thing. But like yeah. I told you earlier, like everything we do, whatever it's alcohol or money, it's a tool. 
and yeah. it's how we it's how we use it that determines whether it's good or bad. You know, if you use money, in a in the day to day, yeah, people have to realize everything we build in this world requires um, capital. So you need money. So like, if you want to build a house for your family, you want to take care of your family, you want to retire your parents, you want to build schools, you want to, you know, whatever you want to do for your community, for your neighborhood, whatever. Like you would need uh, financial. Uh, capital to in order to build those dreams, those visions, those uh, those things that we want. And I know a lot of times I hear Polynesians like, "How can we have? We don't have more of this in Tonga. How can we don't have this more in Tonga? We don't have more of this." And because uh, nobody's done, no, yeah, well, we need money. You know, things don't just pop up out of the nowhere. And just <laughs> build up, like you know, somebody needs to take the initiative and figure out a plan and 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 build something and, and find some investors. Like, but those are you know, it's just they don't think about that type of stuff. So as much as we want to live that simple uh, Polynesian life. And all I'm saying is, look, all I'm saying is don't complain about stuff if you're not willing to take that step. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if you, if you think God, family and, and, and starting kids is, is what's important in your life and you're happy and that's your purpose in life. That's fine, uh, yeah. That's cool, but don't complain. Yes. All right. But don't if you don't want more. Yeah. If you yeah, want more from your then, future. Then take the initiative and go out there and make things happen. That's all I'm saying is like if you think money is evil and then then you do it. Look, do you? But I don't want to hear it. <laughs> right. I don't hear complaining about any your financial problems. Uh, but that's just my. That's, but that's that's you know my little thought process on that. But what, 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 but go ahead. What were what you gonna say? Yeah, and also like economics wise, when you think about different countries with the healthiest populations and all of that it's all countries that have money and had have advanced and moved forward and they have better education there and things like that so i do think i definitely think it is important to remember that it doesn't take a lot of money to invest in order to get a pretty good return it's yeah. not like we're it's not like we're looking at money as like a god. It's just as a tool, as you said, like a vessel to yeah. get the future, our future generation towards where they want to be and to make to make the generations before ours to make their sacrifices not go in vain. Like they didn't move to America just to have us all here just repeat the same cycle. If they wanted that, they would have just stayed in Tonga. Like when we think of our grandparents and stuff and their their stories and our ancestors and their stories they didn't leave everything they knew behind that they were comfortable with just to see their posterity be stagnant you know they wanted more and they wanted us to have this access to everything here in this foreign land and take advantage of it and just thinking of the sacrifices that those before us have made and how courageous they were to come to a new country and learn a new language and, you know, immerse themselves in a totally different culture while still balancing their own culture from their homeland should be inspiration enough for us to want to do better and to want to become more than what the bare minimum is. So, yeah. 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 Like, and like you said, like, you know, um, we, got, we just got to see money as a, in a different light. That you can, you, there's so much good you can do, uh, not only for yourself, for your family, for your kids, and but also for the community uh, if you go out there and, and, and build gen, um, generational wealth. Um, so, you know, uh, for everybody out there that's watching this, and, you, know, you know, they want to mix, you know, they want to start a business, want to, you know, start building, investing, and build their generational There's nothing wrong with making more money. There's nothing wrong with that. There's, not, there's, not, there's nothing wrong with, like, being a millionaire. If you want to be a millionaire, go for it. You know, like whatever you want to do, there's nothing wrong just with make money. Sure, just, just make sure you spend to stimulate the economy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like you said, it's like whatever you want to do is just like you said, is how you use the money, right? If you use it to hurt other people, and then yeah, yeah, then you know it's it's bad. But if you use it to do good, and, and but just think about all you know, as much as people think about the bad, it, it just think about the good. How much good you can do uh, for yourself and for your family and uh, and for your country. Um, and you know, it's just funny. It was like. I just, I just thought about, I remember when, uh, when I started working and, um, and I, and I, I remember when, when I made my first, uh, six figure income, the first time I ever, ever, when I, when I did that for the first time in a year that through that process, I was working like nonstop. I was working like 70, 80 hours in a week. 
I was just grinding, and I remember. <laughs> that was I said last. That was like a couple of years ago. So, was, <laughs> so baller alert! Baller alert! Nah, no, look, six figures in the bay. That's uh, that's uh, minimum wage. Yeah, that, 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 that is yeah. that is poverty. Yeah, uh, six figures in the, in the bay area. If I was in Texas, like you, I'm a, I'm a baller like you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm a baller like you. If I pay six figures in, in Texas, six figures is uh, what do you call it? Uh, somebody wrote an article. Six figures in the bay is. Um, Oh, what's that word? What's that word? What's that word? What's that dude, word? The bay is crazy. I just, dude, I, just, I, I totally forgot that word. It would come up, come around. So yeah, but I remember when I used to work, right? When I used to, when I made my first, I always working. I always focused on my career, and I remember my family was always like, "Man, all he cares about is working. All he cares about is working, money, making money." My mom was like, "I'm a papa." My my families and everything. And then, and then it's funny, but when it came to bill time, when it came to like, you know, when it comes to about paying bills, who, who was the first person on the, on the call list? It was always me. <laughs> Will <laughs> I mean, the bill. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, I just found it funny. It was like, as much as they, all the hate and shit they gave me for, for working and focus on my career and missing, you know, family functions and missing, fam, you know, going out, going to church. And, you know, I had to make a lot of personal sacrifices to, to do what I had to do, but it's funny, but when it came to like you know, finish, uh, you know, paying bills and stuff like the ball, was, hey, you know, they'll get their call, <laughs> but even but they'll talk behind my back. But just I just thought about that in this little flashback. So, um, yeah. So okay. So uh, so I want to just talk about out of the norm. I do want to talk something that you mentioned before. Uh, I think you mentioned, I think this is not a hot topic. Um, if you're open for <laughs> open to do this, I know you mentioned uh, when we were just discussing about the culture and everything, I know you brought up like uh, parents not accepting other cultures. And I, th I think you said it also before we just talk about like yeah. the, racist, the racism within the culture, the racism. Right. Uh, I feel like that's, uh, I want to talk about that because I know that's a, a topic that, that happens all the time. Yeah. Um, when it comes to you know picking you know going into interracial relationships uh friends whatever but in your experience you know uh what was your experience with that just seeing yeah the i've never had like a personal experience with that specifically mm -hmm. but i've seen other tongan people getting or yeah other tongan people getting into relationships with other races and just thinking of how tongans perceive there is definitely racism within the culture and you know words like oh like Oksoma uli uli, you know yeah. saying that about if somebody's dating somebody who and i'm not saying disclaimer i'm not saying all tongans are like this like yeah. the older generation not all it's common it's common no yeah it's not a lot of older people in the tongan culture don't feel this way but sometimes you will see it when they make comments about somebody dating somebody who's in who's like black or something and they'll make little comments about it and poke fun of it and stuff and I think those things are kind of toxic not kind of they are toxic they are we, yeah we need to be real about certain things in our culture like that that negatively impact our youth and like you know imagine Imagine if I had a little, I just imagine if I had a little sister and she was dating a black guy and she brought her home and have somebody in our family members, you know, making negative comments about them just based on the skin of their coat, the color of their skin. And I just think it's unfair. And I think that um, there's also this sense of racism in our culture because seeing how light skinned people in, within our culture, they're seen as like, oh, kili ma'a, you know? But if somebody's a little bit darker, they're like, oh, ooh, ooh. like it's yeah. like all of a sudden, but it's, it's knowing that, that that's messed up and identifying that that's toxic, I think is important because a lot of people in our culture are beautiful and whether they're light skinned or dark skinned, they're beautiful. And we, we just need to put an end to making comments about family members who are dating like a black guy and, you know, or from a different culture, a Tongan person who's darker, making them feel less than, because that's not right. It's not plain mm -hmm. and simple. Just treat people with respect and know that the color of our skin 
shouldn't determine how we're treated because we already have enough racism in the world. There's no need for us to be projecting that. I know for our generation, it's fine because every, everyone yeah. I know in our generation, they're not racist. Yeah, we grew up in different cultures. More, yeah. yeah, I see it more in the older generation. They say little things that are just kind of like, hmm, subtle, but you know that it's racist. Yeah, and then it becomes like part of our, the way we joke and then and it becomes, like, that, yeah, that's, that's humor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like a joke, but it's at the it's same time. Like, it's still racism. <laughs> it's racism, yeah. Like, yeah, you think it's funny, but that's somebody's life. That's somebody's race. That's somebody's loved one that you're making fun of. And it's not funny. Like, stop yeah. laughing about it. I know. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's, I, 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 like, like you said, I think for our generation, we're more, uh, embrace it because we grew up in schools with different type of kids right. but i guess within uh within the other generation they just uh, stuck with that old mentality to stick uh with our own um yeah. well since we're talking about relationships we could just dive into that topic um <laughs> so uh can you talk about um you know your um relationship experience um being mormon uh being traditional, grow up in, in the Tongan culture, uh, what do they expect out of you uh, to, as far as your partner, you know, uh, I know a lot of women, they, they struggle with this, you know, when um, in the poly culture, they expect you to get married early, you know, um, so like if you don't get married early and then the longer you delay it, they just, <laughs> they, they, they think something's wrong with you or you're too old, <laughs> or, you know, or, you know, nobody, you know, and, uh, you're, you're uh, I guess the, the, the market is, is it's shrinking and you're never going to find somebody. <laughs> so pretty much like, like, kind of like there's a lot of pressure to marry, marry early. And then I've seen some, I've seen some girls I know that they just settle for anybody when they, as they get older, like they, they just feel this pressure, like, Oh my God, oh my God, I'm not gonna get married. Cause, and then, cause you know, that's, that's the first thing that happens in a family, you know, you go to church, Hey, go, go feel, go feel, you know, <laughs> you know, is your, like is your family like that? Is your family, they do that to you or just to the girls in your family? No, nah, nah, honestly, they don't. I mean, they do. I mean, they do ask questions, but I realize it's more of a, a for women. Um, I, I mean, I here and there for me, but I, I but, but nobody really asked me, but I do notice it's more, it's more common for women. Um, and of course, like I, I mean, this is just my mentality. As a guy, I feel like I have all the time in the world. Because, <laughs> like, I guess, you know, I, I, I mean, th that's just how I feel. But I know women is different because you guys have your biological clock, right? So, like. Dude, it's like, I'm not, e I'm not even thinking about marriage. And it's yeah, funny. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. It's funny you brought that up because, yeah, I feel like. I feel like right now, I feel like I'm in a healthy relationship. Yeah. So, it's like. It's, do you hear? I mean, do you hear from your family? Do you hear like, like when you're gonna get married? Do you hear no. from your family? No, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, so it's funny you say that because my family they're the total opposite. They, there's not even a hint of wondering when marriage is. I don't know. I just think because marriage, I feel like marriage is serious, right? Like this is gonna be the person you end up with. You're gonna be sharing your your home with, your finances with, your children with. It's a huge decision, and I think it's important to take your time. You know, take your time and and date around and see what it is you like. Also, that's how you become emotionally intelligent is when you get to identify your toxic traits and what you need to work on, and also what you want in a lifetime partner. Um, so I think it's important to just do you like if if somebody ends up falling in love with you and it ends up working out and you guys are on the same page, your visions are aligned, it's a healthy relationship, no toxic stuff involved, then great, move forward. But I think maybe, maybe it part of it is because, you know, <laughs> I've been less active, but I'm sure if I went to church, yeah, stuff, they, a I would probably definitely feel the pressure, but I'm kind of glad that I haven't felt any of that pressure. You know, you know, you never felt that pressure when you came, when you came back from your mission, because no. you know that's 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 the return mission. That's the, that's the expectation, right? Come back from your mission, get, get married in the next two weeks. Yeah, 
<laughs> like I said, I stopped. I, I kind of stopped going to church. So <laughs> I would like. I wouldn't know because yeah. yeah. But yeah, luckily I haven't. Yeah, I just I, I haven't struggled with that at all, or felt like I was pressured to get married earlier. Yeah. Like that. I'm, I'm interested to hear like, um, what did you look for in a partner? Because uh, I know we talked about like earlier about sex. How like we don't discuss about sex, so people don't know what 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 you know. They don't they're not prepared for it when you get when you get to the real world. So, growing up, like what we you know what were the things you saw back in the day that you were looking for a partner that maybe then that now today that you don't even have the same criteria or that's different from how you look at find, finding a partner now. I'm interested to, to hear that because I know a lot of times as, as as young women and young men, we grow up and we're not taught these things as far as relationships. So we don't know, like you said, we don't have the emotional intelligence to able to understand what we what we want to identify from a healthy partner because we just don't have that knowledge. Yeah. So so, so can you talk about, if you don't mind, you talk about what you were looking for in a guy when you were 18 and then oh, yeah. compare, compare it to what we're you looking for a guy today. <laughs> 18, your <laughs> expectations of a guy is pretty unrealistic <laughs> because you, you know, you're young and I always wanted somebody like growing up, I always wanted somebody who was like my dad, you know, every girl wants somebody who has characteristics similar to their dad and stuff. Yeah. But like I said, at 18, what I wanted then was like, just everything was perfect. You know, when you think of like, oh my gosh, the, the perfect guy would be somebody who has this, who has that, who can take care of me and stuff like that. But then as you grow, grow older, you realize that not everything is materialistic and not everything is based on that. And it's more when you grow into yourself then you realize that you've become a completely different person and you need somebody who can understand you emotionally and you can communicate with and you can um, make goals with because, you know, there's a, a huge future. And so somebody who's like goal oriented, somebody who's hardworking, you know, things like that, you realize later in life that. And even now you realize that, you know, social media will have, will have you fooled that everything is perfect. This is what perfect relationships are like. They even have memes of how this is what a perfect relationship looks like. But what they don't show you is a relationship takes a lot of work, you know, within yourself, within the other person. And as a team, you really have to work at it. And it's super hard work. It's not all lavender and roses all year round. There's going to be hard times and you need somebody who will take care of you and not judge you. And you can, who can be like your best friend, you know, at the end of the day, I feel like that's, what's important, but yeah, younger, you're just thinking like, Oh, like a return missionary. <laughs> 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 like who has, you know, this perfect family and who will be just Prince charming and all that stuff. And then you realize, as you grow up that that's not actually what you want what you want is somebody who's there literally through thick and thin and somebody who encourages you to be better and to strive to be the best you so but yeah no pressure no well no pressure you don't have to <laughs> oh of course of course you don't, you don't have to get married and like rush <laughs> into things it, it takes time yeah, also like just to put out there for everybody, you know, marriage is a big decision. It's a, one of the biggest decisions that we will ever make. And that's why I'm glad you brought it up. Take time, you know, and there's there's no timeline when it comes to love and finding that that partner. Um, so take as much time as you want. And I know a lot of people want to rush into it, but just, I, just I, th I guess because of our culture, we don't really, you know, we, we don't really, see marriage as a big decision but it is a big decision this is somebody that i mean uh depending on your on your value whether you believe or not on you know staying together like but as uh, divorce or whatever but you know it's a big decision just somebody you're gonna spend think about it. this is somebody you're gonna spend the rest of your life with that is one of the biggest decisions and also we talk about financial literacy financially <laughs> you know she <laughs> make sure you know <laughs> she don't take half of what you have. So like, you gotta make sure as men, you know, if you are trying to build wealth and financial and financial success, you gotta make sure you have that right partner. Like, uh -huh. that's gonna be there and not just 
take half your thing and then <laughs> and leave, and leave you left to dry, uh, which that we happens a lot. Um, so it is a big decision. So I want people to take their time when it, when it comes to choosing a life partner. Um, also, want to ask you, I'm, I'm just interested interested to hear what were things that you, you used to tolerate for men back in the day when you used to go into relationships when you were younger that you don't tolerate now. So the thing is. I feel like all my relationships, my serious ones, were long distance. So, <laughs> oh my god, oh, the, the, so, the moment, the moment dating, <laughs> that LDS dating. No, I wasn't. Uh, even, yeah, that LDS. No, no, just, just, right, just the, the LD, the LDR. It's called LDR. Long no, no. Oh. Oh, 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 no, no, no. I'm just saying. I, I, that's. A, I feel like that's a common thing I see in a lot of women, like the long distance. But what's funny is like none of them were Mormon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying the dating. You know, they date long distance and then you meet and then get married. Uh, I just see. I just hate. I, I just. I just see for more. I see more long distance relationship from my Mormon friends than I than my other friends. You know. Yeah. So. so like before, I feel like I don't know why it was. It just happened that way because you know, or I visit New Zealand or Australia, like stuff like that. But. So I don't even know how to answer that because I feel like I feel bad for them for having to deal with me. <laughs> <laughs> you would be so. I mean, if ask yourself like, why did you get to? Uh, why do you? Why you always were into like long distance? Never into people in, in where you lived. You ever, ever yeah, thought so about now, that? So now I'm in a like. Uh, short distance relationship if that is even what it's called like a normal now i'm like is, in a normal is short distance state. like a, another state away what, what does that mean short distance no it's another state. <laughs> okay okay i'm just, I'm just, okay. <laughs> I'm, just I'm just trying to make fun of it. <laughs> state away short distance. I'm dying. no and then, um, i don't know i feel like before i feel like i'm really into like spending time with myself so i feel like before long distance seemed great because you didn't really have to deal with the person so much all the time or see them all the time you know but I feel like it did it does take a toll it, I feel like it doesn't work unless there's a set plan for you and that person to move to the same country at some point if there's yeah. no plan of that of one of the other if, of, of one of you moving then it's just it's not gonna work because it just doesn't work out, you know? So, but yeah, but before I feel like I, number one, I was probably afraid of like commitment. So short distance wasn't really the thing. And I feel like in the Bay, as you know, everyone knows each other. So it's like- Oh, got you, got you, yeah. <laughs> if you like date one person, it's like that person, the chances of that person being with one of your friends already, like, dating one of your friends already it was really high or in the ward <laughs> and so yeah so it just never worked out but that's why i feel like long distance was always my go-to i guess but but yeah but now it's different so is this the first time you're doing a short distance relationship the first time ever i feel like yes like a real yes this is this is the very first time, I believe. And if I'm capping, somebody else can call me out, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is this is the first time. Okay. So so what what was the the immediate, I guess, gratification that you just felt being in a short uh, short distance relationship that you never felt being in a long distance relationship? Yeah, so this I feel like this relationship is a lot of communication and a lot of figuring out each other's flaws and also forgiving each other um, for each other's mistakes and also just being really honest. Cause you know, with a short distance, you're gonna face the person like that yeah. every week, you're gonna like be facing that person and you're gonna go on a date or something. So you can't lie about your feelings because that person already knows your energy, you know? And yeah, so yeah. I've noticed that short distance relationships are definitely healthier. They require communication and commitment and they require you to just become a better person. I noticed with long distance, it's like, you're always on the phone with the person. So it's like, 
it's different because yeah. the phone in real life are totally different. You don't, you're not really getting human interaction. You're getting yeah, yeah. Wi-Fi interaction. <laughs> I feel like I feel like the long distance. Is, I mean, I've never been a long distance before, but just based on what, like what I see with my friends, I feel like the the long distance is is like it's like a honeymoon. It's like the honeymoon phase. Like right, it's it's just all you know, lovely dovey. But you don't really get to know because I feel like the most important thing of choosing a, a life partner you have to know them not only the good days but also their bad days like right. you gotta know their flaws you gotta know their their habits their bad like like you said we all have toxic habits so you gotta know this but i feel like in the long distance you never get to know that because number one you know you know you don't even see each other but when you finally see each other it's just all honeymoon. it's just yeah it's just a honeymoon like it's all just like i'm so happy to see you see exactly yeah so it's like that is, I feel like that is totally different, you know, than actually having somebody who, like, with short distance, you see the person, if you need something, that person can help you out, you can help each other out, you can interact in a healthy way. But yeah, see, with long distance, it's like, you're just, like you said, honeymoon phase, everything is like, great. And then finally, when you see each other, it's still great, because you missed each other. Yeah. And then people end up probably end up getting married and they realize it's totally different. Like yeah, exactly. living with the person and having long distance, it's totally different. But yeah, maybe yeah, you should it. try, maybe you should try long distance and oh. let us know. <laughs> and no can do, no can do. <laughs> uh, no, it's funny. I, I, I have a, a lot of friends that, uh, that they, I don't, I don't know if it's a Mormon thing, but maybe like the Tongan thing, but I don't know. But I do see a lot of girls, they date um, these guys from Tonga right okay yeah yeah yeah. And, and and it's and uh i always see just what happens is like you know it's all lovey-dovey it's all they go to the honeymoon phase all that and for some reason and i've just seen it for some reason girls in america think that guys in donga are, i guess more virtuous than, than guys in america <laughs> it's a lie <laughs> i mean i know america we have a bad rap you know the, in the bay of course in the bay area you know we it's not you know we do not you know it's not you know, you know we have this you know but yeah i always see uh, a lot of tongue girls like they'll they guys from the island and they think these guys you know they, that's the common belief that guys now are more virtuous because you know they come from humble beginnings and they know poverty so they're like <laughs> I just, i'm just laughing i'm sorry no, i'm um, like why is he laughing <laughs> no because these guys come and it's totally opposite oh you know, yeah, like, yeah 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 no i'm i'm yeah it's totally opposite but it's it, they come here totally opposite and a lot of have a lot what also a lot of times when you date somebody if they're from a different country they're, they're not accustomed to this especially, especially if they come to america they're not used to this culture as well <laughs> exactly like Tonga is not there's not a lot of financial responsibility. Then they come here, and I see that what happens. Like the guys, like wait, you know, the girls, like okay, we gotta be married now. We have to, we need to go find a job. We need to find a career. And the guys, like wait, wait, what the hell? Like, I, 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 I was Slow chilling. Down. I was chilling in Tonga. <laughs> so it's, it's yeah. I, so I guess I I could just see yeah like how that can like that can be struggle if you don't get to see that person. On that. but but like I said, I'm not trying to discourage anybody from all this in relationships. I've seen it. I have seen it work out. So. Do you, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. This is just a discussion. <laughs> we're just, we're just sharing uh, our ideas. So whatever you feel like works for you, uh, makes you happy, and you find your, uh, you know, you're the person. Then all I, I go for it. Go for it. Um, for, some, for some people, it works out. For some people, it works out. Yeah. But I think, yeah. I, I think it definitely can just be very stressful, like on both parties, because. Yeah, it's just stressful. And then you just have to constantly be on your phone and it's just not healthy and yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, also, uh, oh man, I had, I had, oh my, I had, I had, I had, to, I had, to, I had, to, I had the question again. I had the question I wanted to ask you. It slipped from my mind one, one more time. It was a good, really, really good question too. Wow. <laughs> it was a really good question. Uh, I guess, I guess I'll, I'll try, I'll try to think of, I'll go back to it. I'll try to go back to it. Um, so for you, I want to, I guess I, I want to talk, I know we, you talked about a little bit, we talked about it already. We, we, we went back and forth on it. Um, but I know that, that was, I mentioned earlier in the podcast, we will spend some time after and talk a little bit more. Uh, 
about you, uh, about financial literacy. Uh, if you want to dive, do you want to finish up? Do you want to add more things to it or we can just- No, we're good. We good on that? Like, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. I feel uh, like people are like, okay, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about mental health. Um, because I feel like that's something that's really important in our culture. Uh, to, you know, insecure, how, how we deal with our emotions, how we deal with our insecurities, how we deal with fear, um, understanding our emotional stability. Um, so everything that ties, on, ties to it. So I want to ask you about your own experience with mental health, and not only for yourself, uh, but what you see with you know, your friends, uh, your friends, and um, if you don't mind, you know, being uh, vulnerable to the, being vulnerable and talking about your own insecurities, insecurities that you used to have, uh, you had for yourself as a woman, uh, your own fears and doubts that you had for yourself as a woman, uh, things that you, had, you know, thoughts and things that you had to learn to overcome and and uh, and, and grow out of. Um, as you become uh, the person you are today, because you know, just by talking to you, I, I know I can tell you're a very independent and strong-minded woman. I can just tell by just based on our love. You. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they don't. You don't. You know, you don't, I can just tell you, you're the type of woman you don't take shit. You know, you don't take shit from nobody. <laughs> All right. So you know, in order to become that type of woman, you, 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 there's a lot of transformation as far as mentally uh, when it comes to our emotional health to get to that place. And yeah. um, so can I ask you, yeah, talk about your own experiences growing up, your own fears, doubts, insecurities that you went through, where those doubts, fears, and insecurities came from, whether it came from your culture, whether it came from your environment, whether it came from uh, your own experience. So I'm interested to, to dissect that and kind of, because I know that there's a lot of Polynesian women and men uh, that are going through mental health issues. And because we don't talk about it, because we don't educate ourselves about it, to understand it, uh, these things tend to stay with us uh, for a long period of time, so for some, for some, for some people, their whole life, and they never yeah. get over it. And it's sad to see uh, people that are, you know, people uh, broken their whole life. And uh, so I never want to see that happen. So yeah, can you kind of just talk about your own mental health journey and where it started, and for you learning about it and how to overcome it? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I think the pro like I talk about my mom a lot and I think she has a lot to do with the strength that I find to deal with, to tolerate a lot of um, trials that I go through is through her example as just being a really strong woman. And part of it is like, she, I don't, I've only remember, I don't even know if I remember my mom ever crying out of, other than like funerals and just, yeah. you know, but I think seeing that growing up and knowing that sometimes you have to fight through your human instincts to feel weak and stuff like that was a big part of it. But I think growing up now, I've noticed that like, it's okay to feel, it's okay to not be okay sometimes and to just yep. be by yourself mm -hmm. and, and cry it out and whatever it is. But for me personally, when I think of the hard times that I've gone through, um, that could have potentially ruined me mentally what I usually do is I like to stay by myself I don't really like you know some people they probably like to be surrounded by a lot of people but with me how I deal with my mental health is if I go through something super difficult mm -hmm. I internalize it and I try to process it for myself first I cry if I if I need to cry I cry it out and the journaling part that I'm talking about really helped me like process things, you know, for some mm -hmm. people, they, um, it's good to vent too to somebody you really trust and get their perspective. Cause at the time when bad things happen to us, we're in that intense moment and we're thinking the world's going to end, you know, and stuff like that. But I noticed that when you take a step back and process it for yourself first. So before even talking to anyone before even, um, Sorry, that was somebody calling me um, before even. Uh, yeah, so before even talking to anyone, you try to process it for yourself first and try to realize what's going on and reflect on it. And that's why journaling and um, writing really helps me because and taking that time out when you really feel mentally overwhelmed, just take that time out just for yourself. Sometimes what yourself needs is literally just yourself to be there for it, to comfort yourself and to uh, forgive yourself, you know, and realize you did make a mistake and 
whatever the case may be. So I think growing up, seeing my mom was one, learning to just love myself and what self-love really meant was accepting myself, even through times where I know I probably wasn't my best or wasn't the best person or made decisions that wasn't really good decisions. I think learning self-love and self-acceptance really does something great for your mental strength and your mental health. And because you know what, when you love yourself and you're strengthened by yourself and um, you accept yourself, sorry, my mom keeps falling. <laughs> okay. um, when you do all of those things, then it's hard for people to um, come for you or, you know, or ruin you or whatever the case may be. Yeah. So, so what were like, um, if you don't mind, what, what, so what were the specific like insecurities um, fears that you had uh, growing up that you had to learn to like overcome it um, and grow out of? Um, insecurities. Let me think. Like, I think, I think, um, it's so funny because I've, re- I've trained and conditioned myself so much. I know, to- I know set aside yeah. that so I think it's really cool that you're asking me these things because I'm trying to dig deep um need a shovel <laughs> the shovel out <laughs> what did give me some ideas what did you struggle with um I always thought that I was I was average um I came from Donga you know I was fob you know I grew up in a in a household where all I saw people do was like yate so I, I always thought that I was like insignificant um, compared to everybody else. I never had confidence in myself of what I was capable of achieving. So I always would never try to do anything at my best because I just never thought that I was good enough because I just, I grew up like, you know, I, just, I, I mean, even though as much as I wanted to come to America to make something of myself, like I came to this yeah. world uh, and I just saw everybody, oh my God, like I just saw how ahead of everybody I, uh, was, you know, I, I mean, my language was I was I. I spoke English was all right. So you know, I guess we like. I guess that's a, one of the, the things we struggle with as kids is like comparison. So we always comparing ourselves to everybody, which is something that I guess you learn in, in your self love journey, not to worry about what everybody else is doing and kind of just focus on yourself, like you said. But that was a, one of my. I had a, I had really bad um, self esteem image, and I always thought to myself, oh, I'm just average. I'm not. I'm not meant to do anything, and then. I met some people that some good people and mentors that changed that my that mindset to encourage me that you know I'm more that I can you know I do deserve the best in life and I can do anything I put my mind into. Um, you know I just gotta you know focus on myself and then do what I gotta do. But that was something. But that was one insecurity, and then I'm sure a lot of Tonga kids can relate. You know, when you're in class, you know, people and a teacher ask a question, you know the answer, but you just don't want to raise it shy. <laughs> you're shy. Yeah. you know you're just like oh i don't want to you know don't want to stand out or whatever so i just have to i have to get out of that uh that mindset yeah i think one thing for me that i'm personally thinking about is seeing because sometimes like how you said that idea of comparison and sometimes you see if people are moving ahead in life and they're growing at a pace that is exponentially super much faster than you at whatever it is. I think for me personally, I've seen that happen where I felt like, I feel like I'm behind because like, look at AOC. She's already like a politician at a young age or, yeah. or looking, seeing like the Canadian prime minister, Justin Trudeau, like yeah. the, these people are young and they're accomplishing all these great things. And then watching, for example, watching the inauguration, Amanda Gorman, the poet, mm-hmm. she's only 22 and you're like, dude, she's like amazing. Look at all these, you know, it's, I feel like at certain times in my life, I have had those moments where I'm like feeling like I'm progressing a lot slower, but then, yeah. but then realizing, wait, everyone's going at their own pace like just slow down enjoy the moment it's all about balance and when it's your time it'll be your time (laughs) but as far as like specific but as far as like specific 
insecurities. I don't even, I can't think of a specific one growing up. Masi, masi. I'm sure I've had a ton, but I've created this lock box. And I'm like, put it in the back there. You don't need it. It's negative. Anything negative, put it in the back. <laughs> No, I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Um, sure, no, you know no. what? I need to go to therapy. And once I go to therapy and unlock these things, I will message you and let you know what it is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll do, then we'll do like a, uh, a quick live on IG. Hey, guys, just to just, just add just, one, one, yeah. one more thing. One more thing. Just add <laughs> one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that insecurity? It was a yeah. no. Like, it was a no. <laughs> yeah, Diva, I know we left this uh, this question on uh, on clo uh, on uh, on uh, clo uh, on open, so we can close it right now. Close that question. Um, yeah. So uh, I want to ask, yeah, and just add on to what you said about uh, about mental health and insecurities, and also like timing. I feel like that's something that's big within our uh, culture, but also especially within our generation. It's like we're always comparing ourselves and then we always feel like that we're either behind or not or too ahead compared to everybody else, especially when it comes to anything, all, everything, like when it comes to relationships, getting married, getting a career, finances, goals, dreams. And I feel like, and that's, I guess that's one of the hardest things about being uh, young uh, is trying to figure out our life, what we want to do and who we're going to spend it with and, um, what we're going to build for the rest of our life. That's one of the hardest challenges uh, that we have to figure out. But just want to put out there for everybody listening that, you know, there's no timetable when it comes to how life, how your life is supposed to work out. Um, no one is, no one, and I think I read this quote, no one is, no, you're not behind, you're not ahead, you're exactly where you need to be. That is so true. Thank you for reminding us. <laughs> you know, I got you. You know, I got, you know, I got that got the quote. You know, <laughs> that's the quotes. <laughs> that quote book. <laughs> that quote book. Yeah, because if you look, if you think about it, and you and you brought up some great names, right? So, um, you know, Justin and AOC. But for me, that's you know, I for me, I like I like to read up on on very successful and influential people. And you know how many times I read you know the stories of Oprah, the stories of Bill, you know Bill Kilman, the owner for the Dallas Mavericks. Where you know, uh, I'm sorry, Mark Cuban. I'm sorry. You know, Mark Cuban was a bartender at, at 29 years old. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, you know, Oprah Winfrey. You know, a lot, a lot. There's so many people out there that, you know, there's some people like you know, there are a lot of people like AOC and Justin, like you said, that they succeed early, but there are a lot of people in life that also found success later, uh, and they found out their purpose or their true calling in life later. So, and, and, and sometimes your purpose is exactly where you are. Like, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, you, you have to allow these, these things to happen. But of course, it still does require responsibility from your part and making good decisions and putting the effort, surrounding yourself with good people and taking care of yourself. But just understand that everything happens for a reason and you're exactly where you need to be. But the question is, is what are you going to do moving forward? So it doesn't matter what you did yesterday. Yes, we can't change yesterday, but we can always change what we do today and tomorrow. Um, and that's the thing. Like, always just think about what you're gonna do moving forward. And if you like, and I always believe in, like, I believe in like, you know, God and karma. Like, if you do, if you, if you make good decisions towards the universe, towards other people, towards the world, towards your goals, if you're always doing your best towards what you want to do out of life, you know, the universe, the karma, whatever you believe in, higher power, universe, karma, God, it always finds a way to come back into your life if you're really committed. All right. Um, and that, yeah, and like I said, you know, if you haven't found your love, you gotta find your career. If you haven't found your, your calling, your purpose, or you know, your happiness. Um, and I think one of my also, I get, I'll, I'll, I'll add another quote: "Just because it's not happening now does not mean it will ever happen." <laughs> <laughs> right? Quote book. Quote book. I know. I know. I got the quotes. I got the quotes on lock. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, that's a, that's a, that's one of the like the the common thing, um, mindsets that we have when we're very young because we're always comparing ourselves to everybody just because we, we feel like we're, because we're not where we want to be right now, we mm -hmm. always, we, sometimes we discourage ourselves or we're so hard on ourselves to think that uh, it's never going to happen. And then it paralyzes you from actually making, it making, happen. making decisions. And, and then the one thing that we have in life that separates, separates us from all like life forms is that we have the power of 
agency. We have the power of making decisions, the power of free will. And that's why you, anybody in this world, doesn't matter what the circumstances are. How many times have you seen people in the world come from the worst homes, broken homes, abusive homes, worst parts of the world, third world countries in poverty, but for some reason they were able to get out of it because they made a decision, they made a choice. They looked, they did not let their, they, went, they didn't become a product of their environment. They became a product of their decisions. And all you guys out there watching this, you know, you, you can always make a choice, no matter what. You can always make a choice and you always have the power of choice. And if you always do good decisions, you know, try, you know we're gonna make mistakes. That's power of making choices. You're gonna make mistakes. But no matter, if, like, but even when you do make a mistake, you always have a choice how to respond to that mistake. So just want to put it out there. I know, I know Lupe already had some fire already. I wanted to add some fuel to that fire. You know what I'm saying? To throw some. <laughs> it's burning now. Fuvela, <laughs> Pito, eh? Fuvela. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah, so I wanted to add to that because I, I see so many, you know, Polynesian sisters and brothers, I go through it. It's, and I understand the dynamics of why we feel that pressure because growing up as Polynesian, we have this pressure from our parents. We have this pressure from the world, society, church. And we, there's so many expectations that, of how they want us to be, the life they want to live. I love the Polynesian, like, this is like, this is the Polynesian timeline of what they want, right? Be a good boy, be a good girl, go to church every Sunday. <laughs> All right, go to school, go to college, get a degree, settle down, have, have kids as early as possible, have get married as early as possible, <laughs> start a family, get a good job, and that's it. And they want this done by what, 30? Is that the age everybody wants this done? Is that the, the common timeline? It seems like it, for sure. Yeah, like yeah. They, want it, they want you to buy a house. They want you to accomplish all these things uh, by 30 years old. All right, they want you, and, and, and I've seen a lot of people, when, as they get closer to 30, they're like, they get nervous. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, wait. <laughs> like, they're like, oh, like, have no, a they, breakdown. That's how yeah, people they, have breakdowns. Yeah, they have breakdowns. Like, yeah, unrealistic yeah. expectations, just in general. So I think, yeah, that just goes to show as, better to just go on your own page just pace yourself like it's like when you're yeah. jogging <laughs> exactly just just keep them keep moving that's i guess that's the comment keep don't don't stop don't give up don't don't stay down you're gonna fall get back up but keep moving because as long as like you say as long as you're moving towards a destination you will eventually what arrive at that destination all right whatever it's a long distance relationship like she said you <laughs> keep moving you find the shorter distance <laughs> <laughs> And you make it happen. <laughs> so, oh my god! <laughs> cracking up. So, um, yeah. So, shout out to everybody out there. Yeah, yeah. Do you? And don't forget, you exactly where you need to be right now. Uh, to just keep making good decisions for yourself. All right. So, uh, I guess the the one they want to go into, and um, I don't know. You were. Uh, uh, I know this was part of your life. I'm just interested to hear your perspective. Um, I know you were part of the beauty pageant. Um, so can we, can we talk about your experience, um, uh, of doing that? Um, cause I feel like it's, it's a beautiful thing. You know, I always like beauty pageants because it shows the beauty, uh, the beauty of a Polynesian woman and time woman. So I think it's kind of cool. Um, but I, I'm interested to hear your story from, from that experience and what you, what you, what you got out, of, what you got out of it. And, uh, you know, also the things that you learned from it and, uh, from that experience. Yeah. And also what, what inspired you? What, what started that whole journey of? deciding to, was it, to, to be into the uh, Miss Lala, right? It was a Miss Lala? Yeah, so usually yeah. what happens is a, a sponsor or something will reach out to you and ask you to represent their uh, company. And then that's what happened to me initially, which sparked me to want to join it. But then after that, I decided to end up representing like somebody's business who's in my family. And then um, after that whole thing happened, um, you get, so what happens is you get like a rule book thing, um, that you sign and say your intention to join it. And then there are a set of rules that you're given. Um, you must be Tongan. You must know how to speak and write in Tongan. Um, sometimes that's not always the case, I guess, but, um, that they give you requirements and set categories of, um, different events you will be participating in and that's what happens and then you go and then you I feel like it was a great platform to voice 
things that I was passionate about and ended up getting a lot out of it from that sense and a lot of friendships um, I got from that so it was a pretty positive experience like it was super fun and the whole event was great because my entire family was there so yeah it was a it was a fun great experience but also when you put yourself out for beauty pageants you're also open to public criticism yeah so then you um that that is that is a part that you should definitely be prepared for if you're trying to enter beauty pageants and it feels like this was so long ago because it's almost been three years since like out the year that I was in it and but yeah overall it was a great experience I got to meet a lot of people I got to voice um and advocate about what I was concerned about and I ended up as a result of that pageant, I ended up creating my foundation, who's, which is named after my late father, which is called the Sammy Vete Foundation. And we, I say we, but it's mostly me who tries to like do everything. Um, I just aim to bridge the, bridge the gap um, through education and through providing funding for students. So giving them scholarships to pursue higher education and um, specifically youth from Tonga. And so, yeah, so that was something positive that came out of it and inspired me to, you know, having served my mission there and um, seeing the need for funding, because, you know, some kids, they wanted to go to school, but they just didn't have the funding to do so or buy themselves supplies. And seeing the need for that, I thought that would be a good way to give back. And in the future, that's what I hope to do um, I, I hope to continue to do that. You know, once the borders open, there's like other goals and stuff that I want to work on within the Tongan community in Tonga. But I think through the pageant, it opened my eyes to uh, the power that even a small platform like mine can have and the impact we can really make on Tongan youth and, and students. And being here in America, um, we see the power of education and what it can do to transform people's lives and being able to give back to Tonga is I think everything to me and I will continue to do that in the future but that was like the segue to it was through the pageant and I'm really happy that that happened and it was a positive experience for me I'm really grateful for the girls that I ended up meeting there and and yeah it just um allowed me to reflect on certain issues within our culture like this podcast certain issues within our culture within Tonga but also realizing that we all have the power to make a change no matter how little or how big it is we literally all have the power to make a difference and make a change in someone's life in someone's community in a whole country so I think it just drove me to take action for um, issues that I'm passionate about. And I hope to continue nurturing those passions in the future and continuing to do that work, which is important to give back to where we came from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, well, what, what advice, I know you mentioned about one advice, but for any girl out there that wants to go into Miss uh, I know you told him prepare for criticism. You know, be ready for that because you know Tongans are you know when it can when it comes to Miss Alala, they're very super, they're more critical than ever. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to uh, Miss Alala, I've said oh I've seen some nasty comments. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, especially for the girls that don't speak Tongan, if you don't speak Tongan, oh my God, you get you get destroyed. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't even. That's the thing. I don't even know why they have that in their rule book. Like nobody I don't think anyone follows that rule you know like so I think they should just take that out of the rule book <laughs> as soon as as soon as they know you don't speak it oh my god you get the hockey by oh, the Tongans and Tonga yeah the yeah, Tongans yeah. and Tonga <laughs> <laughs> oh my so I uh, think oh yeah, yeah, yeah any girl that's doing one wants to do this or any, any advice for them I guess it all depends on your purpose on why you're doing it. I, I say, don't go in there blindly, go in there with, you know, a motive and a purpose and um, just enjoy yourselves. I feel like it's fun. Like, I feel like 
it was really fun getting to know the other girls and um, building those friendships. And so, yeah, I feel like for girls who've never been to Tonga or haven't uh, lived there or any of that, I feel like it's a fun experience for them. You know, they get to see, they get to see Tonga and they get to enjoy it, their whole family. It's, I feel like it's just a fun thing to do. Um, as far as the advocacy point that I was talking about, I feel like you can advocate for, for um, issues you care about without the pageant. And I think it was a great experience in the past, but I feel like now it's kind of, it's like a little fun activity. If you wanna have a, a fun little summer, then do mm -hmm. it. But if you feel like you have, um, you have a better way to go about advocating for issues in Tonga that you care about, I think you can do that some other way. Um, I definitely don't think pageantry was the most effective way for me personally, now that I think about it. Like if I if, if you were at, if you were to ask me now, I, I don't think I would do it again. Like the me now. At the yeah. time I was like, this is great. You yeah. know, this, this is Fagaleta. Like we on we in there. But I think just looking into it now and realizing um what life is like now, I don't think I would do it again. <laughs> but if, if you are planning if anyone out there wants to go do it and join it i think it's great they'll have fun and just have a great time and be happy and have fun in tonga <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh man we've uh we had some good topics some good discussions <laughs> 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 so um yeah i think we've uh covered everything uh do you is there anything you want to you know um uh, you want to talk about uh, anything in mind comes into mind you're going on in the world you feel like you want to talk about right no. now no that's good i think you've covered everything and thank you for having me on the podcast yeah yeah um thank you for like first like thank, thank you for taking the time to do this and thank you for uh, letting me you know go into uh, opening up and talking about your life <laughs> i know uh <laughs> I know a lot of people uh, don't realize this, but you know, it takes a lot of courage for somebody to be vulnerable and be open and uh, talk about uh, their life, especially, you know, for you to do it and to, you know, promote positive empowerment to all, all everybody that's watching. So, man, I love to you, you know, big hug to you. <laughs> big hug all the way from, from Cali. <laughs> Thank you from Cali. Thank you so much for your time. I very appreciate it. Very grateful. Uh, I guess one thing I always want to, I always, one thing I always tell every guest there we go. One thing I always tell every guest to end up the show, um, do you mind um, leaving us with some final thoughts, some words of wisdom, you know, uh, after, after everything you've gone through your life and all the experiences, all the things that made you who you are today, if you could just give some people um, some words of wisdom um, about and some final thoughts and just end, end off our show with that. Okay, um, some final thoughts. I think I just want to say to go grow through what you go through. I think we're each put in situations and circumstances where we are made as human beings, we are asked to make these important decisions in life and we go through life and sometimes we mess up, but I think it's so important to grow through whatever it is that you go through. And no matter what you put your, your mind to, you can, do, you can literally accomplish anything and whatever you go through, whether it's positive or negative, I just want everyone to remember that you can rise through anything. You can rise above anything as long as you have um, the support of the people who matter to you. And I also want to say that what people think about you is definitely none of your business and staying true to who you are and being yourself will be the best way to keep yourself happy and also spend alone time and remind yourself that you love yourself you know sometimes we tell other people oh, i love you and that but do you tell yourself you love yourself and also another thing that i i always do every morning when i wake up is i ask myself um how you live in like it's just a good question to ask myself every morning is like how you live in like are you doing good are you being nice to other people are you becoming better and also i want to remind everyone that champions 
they keep going even when there's nothing left in their tank. So whatever it is you're going through, just keep going. Even when you feel like giving up, it's important that you just keep going and keep fighting and being strengthened by your, the obstacles you go through. So that's all I'd have to say. Mali, Mali. Say okay, I'll be done. No, just okay. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, yeah, thank you, uh, Dan, thank you for the final thoughts and uh, thank you for sharing your life. Uh, appreciate, appreciate you for doing this and I'm uh, very grateful. And I guess uh, everybody out there, have a great day. I love all you guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna stop the record button. I'm gonna talk to you right after. <laughs> Give me one second. All right, all right.